<clears throat> In the early 20th century, the Gros Michel banana, aka Big Mike, reigned supreme as the most popular banana cultivar in the world. With its sweet, creamy texture and durable skin, the Gros Michel was a staple food for people all around the globe. But the seemingly endless bounty of this banana was not meant to last. As the banana industry grew, so did the threat of disease. And in the 1950s, a deadly fungus known as Panama disease ravaged the Gros Michel plantations, decimating entire crops and driving the banana industry to the brink of collapse. Desperate to save their livelihoods, banana growers turned to a new cultivar, the Cavendish banana, which you see before you. Resistant to Panama disease, the Cavendish became the new face of the banana industry, replacing the once great Gros Michel. However, there is a concern that history may repeat itself with the Cavendish banana, as it is also a monoculture and susceptible to the same Panama disease that wiped out the Gros Michel. In fact, there is already a new strain of the disease called Tropical Race 4 that is spreading around the world as we know it, and it has already devastated banana plantations in Southeast Asia and Africa. With all bananas being clones of one another, the threat of a total wipeout of the world's most popular fruit is very real. The story of the banana is a cautionary tale of the perils of monoculture and the fragility of our food systems. It's a reminder that even the most seemingly indestructible crops can be vulnerable to disease and that the diversity is key to ensuring the longevity and survival of our food sources. The legacy of the Gros Michel banana lives on, so too for the Cavendish banana, a reminder of the delicate balance between man and nature and the high stakes of our quest for sustenance. Alexa, please turn on the bar lights. Good evening, party people. Tonight on a very exciting episode of The Bar With An X, bananas! It's a very serious thing. And so is that sound of my book hitting the floor, my glasses push pushing off to the side. How is everybody tonight? Isn't this, isn't this grim? Bananas! Bananas are what's going on! B-A-N-A-N-A! -A -A. Did I spell that correctly? In any case, this is very moody. Indeed. Uh, I appreciate every one of you uh, sitting through all of that. I see a couple of friendly faces out there tonight. Ima Chow, more than awesome. Larix, my dearest yourself. Good evening to all of y'all. Did you know, honestly, that the banana that you eat today is not the same banana that your grandparents might have been eating? That was a wild fact that I came to uh, during my high school years because my AP bio class when we were teaching about teaching about like biodiversity and stuff was like, yeah, well, a lot of plants out there are all kind of just clones of each other. Um, and that could be a really big problem because, you know, if you have no genetic diversity, then if a bug or a fungus gets into your, into your genes and kills you, it can kill all of your other clones. That's the beauty of biodiversity, people. And uh, it just so happens that cloning plants is just a really, really easy way to produce more but you just kind of graft from one plant onto another it's a beautiful beautiful process Larrick says it did and cavendish bananas are their successors so i att they attempted a rebrand and apparently there's a bunch of other because of the whole like trop what was it tropical was tropical something or other tr4 uh they're trying to figure out the best way to like biodiversify bananas out there without subtracting flavor or durability of their skins and stuff like that Speaking of which, today is National Banana Day, uh, according to at least one calendar on the internet, and so it felt like the right time to put on my banana garb, grab a couple of bananas from the store, or a couple of handfuls of them, and just go wild with bananas. Oddly enough, bananas have found their way into my life in a couple of different ways recently, uh, and the one that sticks out the most is it's a topic of conversation at work. One of my coworkers, who I love very dearly, is a big, big fan of bananas. It's an excellent source of protein, and recently found out that apparently the peel of the banana is a very 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 good source of fiber and a rather neutral dry taste to it that doesn't really stick around in your mouth so we began he began to take bananas and just eat them and i quote like corn on the cob and that was just something that i just had to share with the world and i greatly appreciate that it is a thing and uh, and so at some point this evening i definitely want to bite into a banana like corn on the cob to give my own tasting notes of what that's supposed to be like and knowing that I'm prone to forgetting things, I'm just going to do it right now. This is a banana, Cavendish specifically, Chiquita. There's like three or four different colored Chiquitas 
apparently. Some of them are green, some of them have yellow label, some of them have the blue label. I don't think that there's absolutely any difference between any of them. I all got them at Giant uh, earlier today. So um, the first recipe of the night is um, banana peel. So the muddy banana peel, high in fiber. I don't have much history on it. It's just what it's on the outside. It's the it's the part of the banana that is not the flesh. It holds the flesh in case. You can peel it from the top. You can peel bananas from the bottom. Um, I once saw a horror story that apparently there are spiders in the world that plant their eggs in the bottom of the bananas, which is why growing up I never ate the little nub of the banana at the end. But to this day I have yet to find spiders or spider eggs in the bottom of my banana, and, and I hope it continues that way um, as such. Banana peel with the banana like you would corn on the cob. So, I got a little bit of the banana flesh in there. Very sweet. S smooth. It's almost like, like a pudding texture, obviously. The peel itself is very dry. It reminds me of the dryness. Like if you've ever had a persimmon before, persimmons that are unripe, certain types of persimmons, I don't remember which one, have like this drying texture. It's kind of like the dry texture that you get in like red wines, things with a lot of tannins, like the peels of grapes and such. It's very dry. It's like your tongue becomes a little sandpapery. All things considered, crunch included, this is a very pleasant experience. All oh, because uh, the, the flavor of the banana is not quite unpleasant. It's not bitter at all. There is not too much sweetness there from the peel itself, mostly coming from the banana. And I could understand that if you were somebody inclined to eat a banana, if you want a little extra fiber in your diet, you could you could do it this way. This is certainly one way of eating the bananas like that. It's honestly not that bad. It was a fine crunch too. My goodness gracious. I'm glad this microphone is absolutely set up for such. In any case, this will be the banana that I um, will continue to, I guess, eat throughout the throughout the duration of the screen the stream. So I will put this off to the side here. I uh, will utilize the peel later on for some garnishes, hoping that I actually remember to garnish the cocktails properly. We're still still learning, We're getting used to the 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 um, the pattern with which that I conduct my own show over here. Real quick, I'll fill up on my water, and we'll move into the first actual cocktail recipe of this evening. The first one is what they call a banana daiquiri. A daiquiri, to my knowledge, is like a cocktail that includes like the flesh of the fruit inside of it. If you're familiar with a strawberry daiquiri, those happen to have like, you know, strawberry puree included in it. Either it's the solid bits of the seeds and the leaves or whatever. I think it just depends on the bartender who's making you your drink. But the daiquiri, in this case, the banana daiquiri can be done in a similar fashion where you take some banana puree, you puree it. I don't know. Banana puree is already pureed. You put things into a blender and you kind of sift it out in this cool kind of half frozen blended fashion. There's actually a banana daiquiri two ways that I know of. One I found from the website for a rum spirit out there called Bumboo or Boomboo. I don't know. I was searching on the internet and it came up in like, you get those like tailored ads and stuff. And I saw Bumboo rum and I was like, I wonder they have recipes on their website. So I harvested all of them. I have not purchased Bumboo rum before. Um, so I'm going to make their banana daiquiri, at least according to their website, uh, a little bit differently this time. The distinction between this daiquiri and another one that I hope to be able to cover later on the episode is the one this way is not blended. It's not, it doesn't use any banana puree. Instead, this particular version of the banana daiquiri utilizes just some rum, some demerara sugar, squeezed lime juice, and oh, it actually says banana puree in it. I thought it was going to say banana schnapps. Just, just kidding. We're absolutely blending some bananas over here. Do we put it with the peel or not? I don't really know. That's uh, that's something I guess I'll just kind of figure out as we get there. Lauk says, also high in fiber because, probably because it's just hard to digest. The, um, I feel like there was an old adage that went something like, you know, the best, like the best part of the healthiest part of like the apple is the peel, I believe. It's high in fiber. Whether or not there's a health mechanic there is something that I'm not educated enough to say. However, I do know that you need fiber for a proper digestatory system. Um, gastrointestinal system or else your body just like it doesn't pass things through you want things solid you want things fibrous so this is the banana daiquiri one way using banana puree i do have my blender over here so uh let me just have a, let me go to the the other banana daiquiri recipe and just make sure let me see if i can do things double things up and do things all at once this requires everything to go into a blender so but it does include 
Oh, banana liqueur. It does not. Oh, and, and a single banana. So what, what I can do, what I'll do is for the banana puree, I'm gonna take two bananas. I'm gonna put them into the into the blender. We'll pour out just as much as we need for this particular cocktail. And then when we come back to the frozen one later, which will probably be literally right after, we'll just do it both in a row because I will forget about it. Um, we'll do it that way. I think that sounds good. Dearest says you can do them both. You're onto something there. I agree with that. Let me let me take some of these bananas and just kind of make a little bit of space for our uh, our blender. Who I I thought I gave a name to this blender at some point, and I honestly cannot remember what I named the blender. If anybody can come up with a wonderful wonderful name for the blender, I'm all for it. I'm totally down for that. Oh, I remember the name of the blender. It says Hamilton Beach. Her name is Hamilton. This is Hamilton the Blender, naturally. Uh, I'll, you know, it just makes sense that way. I, um, actually, I redid a little bit of my wiring over here, so I'm gonna see whether or not I can actually, I have to, like, make things awkward. Nope, nope, definitely, definitely things gonna remain awkward down here. Nope, maybe not, maybe, maybe. Hmm, hmm. I redid a little bit of wiring. I moved my lights a little bit. Um, I realized I was, um, I'm not the best at, oh, actually, don't look, plug in the blender yet. I'm putting things into the blender. Don't plug the blender just yet. I was doing a little bit of changing changing of my lighting around. Trying to make the always oh, small, small improvements to the stream around here. Make a more pleasant experience for everybody on that side, as well as this side. There's been visitors recently. So, in order to make our banana daiquiri, we need some banana puree. I believe the traditional way of making banana puree is you take your bananas and you put them into your blender and just kind of go for it. I have a frozen banana in my freezer over here that I'm going to use as the first banana because it has been here for a hot minute. It is browned to all hell, and uh, it's, it's perfect for blending. If you're going to make, like, a smoothie or anything like that, one of the best things that you can use, in my humble opinion, is a frozen banana. Just, just throw it in there. And if you're a fan of the peel, top up, cut off like the top part and the bottom part, and you're just, you're golden. You're off to the races there. Brad says, I've got this on mute while I'm watching hockey, and it's just the best. Well, thank you. I hope the hockey game is good. Who's playing this evening? I actually went to go see my first hockey game about a month ago. It was the Philadelphia Flyers versus the Minnesota Wild. And it wasn't as wild as I was advertised to be. But, uh, it was pretty good. I... I'm having a hard time getting into this frozen banana. So I think what I probably should do is I should let this warm up for a little bit. So I'm just gonna kinda <sighs> breathe on it. I'm gonna leave it there for a little bit. I don't I don't know if they'll get to that. I'll add a little bit more. We'll, we'll use this for the second part of the daiquiri. The second part, the one that actually is supposed to be blended together. Uh, lest, I lest I potentially hurt myself by just trying to take all of my anger out on this frozen banana peel over here. So the first banana that I'll use is the one that I kind of already bit into. It's got my it's got my juices all over it. When this recipe calls for banana puree, it calls for three quarters of an ounce of it. I am more than positive that the entirety of this banana is going to produce more than three quarters of an ounce of banana puree. Um, but that's that's fine. You know what? A little bit of extra banana banana puree never hurt anybody, and we can always use it later for a smoothie later on. This is my banana going into my thing there. Now, but I'm thinking in order to get this thing really, really creamed down, gotta put a little bit of water in there. I should also probably just like break this up a little bit. Remember, do not put your fingers in the blender when it's plugged in. This is completely unplugged. This is completely safe right now. Unless this thing has a battery, in which case, well, I guess we're all kind of screwed. Put a little bit in there. Got my things over here. Also, great news. Wonderful news, actually. I have decided to push forth and um, not settle for the annoyance of the bar arrangements anymore, I've decided that I'm going to buy more shakers and buy more bar spoons and buy more peelers because I, I only have two and nobody here needs to struggle with that. So uh, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be great, it's gonna be wild, it's gonna be wonderful. I'm just gonna add like ounce and a half of water to this like a 40-ish, 45-ish milliliters a little bit, just to give just to give some liquid for things to catch on. Otherwise, I don't know if it's going to blend super well. Again, I am just as new to this as uh, a lot of other people are in this world. I don't blend things very often, and um, as such, I must learn. So please bear with me. We will now take our blender, Hamilton, and plug her in and turn her on, which now that I realize feels a little weird coming from me. So uh, maybe I just won't say that anymore. We'll see. We'll see. Things sound we things sound weird when you refer to things by their 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 gendered equivalent out of context. They they are beautiful and they are blending. So we shall blend. It says 
that I'm using banana puree. So this thing over here has a puree button. So I'm gonna click puree. That'll do it. There it is. It's working. Oh, I don't even have to. That feels very pureed to me. However, let's take a. This is that. Oh, it is very pureed. I'm just gonna shake it around just a little bit, and I'll do a little bit more just to just to make sure that we've got everything pureed in there. Chow says that Hamilton sounds like a corrupted leap pad. I know exactly what you are talking about. However, I cannot bring the voice that you were referring to to mind. I assume it's very, it's kind of mechanical and uh, corrupted and potentially disturbing for children under the age of seven, because I feel like when I was under the age of seven, I utilized the leap pad. Maybe. So we have our banana puree here. I have unplugged Hamilton and I will put their base down off to the side. In order to create the banana daiquiri, we are going to put into a mixing tin, is what they're calling it, some of our banana puree, some rum, demerara sugar, and some freshly squeezed lime juice. So let's go for that then. I'm gonna grab what I'm calling a shaker tin over here. Shaker tin, shaker tin, shaker tan. I don't know, I, I, I never call this thing a shaker tin. They might be made of tin or aluminum or iron or something, I'm not sure. But again, we also need some rum. Now, evidently, this is using what they call original rum. This is the bamboo recipe. I don't know what the bamboo original rum is, but it looks like it's kind of brown. So I'm gonna go with the brown rum that I have, which I choose to be Myers. I like Myers rum. Myers rum is good. I also have of note around here that are dark rums. I also have some Gosling's uh, Black Seal rum, and I also have this tiny container that Dearest got from me from Guatemala, Ron Zacapa. I don't exactly know what that translates to, but uh, it looks pretty good. I think it's aged, and I don't want to use it in a cocktail. I'd rather enjoy that one down on the rock so I can get some nice tasting notes on it. But what we'll need is two ounces of our rum. I'm gonna add my ice a little bit later because I don't have the opportunity in this particular sh particular shaker tin to be able to let my ice come down to temperature and discard the water because it's all just one container there. I personally prefer the use of two-part shakers or I've heard three-part exists out there. Um, I just prefer those a little bit more because I, I feel like I have a little more control over things. And as a man, I am all down for obtaining control. So I need two ounces of my dark rum or if you have a bamboo original you can use that one it looks it looks dark so that's what i'm going with about two ounces or 59 milliliters of that i'm actually running I'm running a little low on that um but lucky for y'all i guess lucky for me i suppose i have an entire container of it behind it that is well we're all friends here so whoops don't drop glass please we're all friends here so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna fill it up Always have, for the for my favorites, I try to have a, a little bit extra laying around just so we can just so that we can fill up on demand. It's nice and easy to do, and hopefully I can do a nice pour out of this. But let's just see. Maybe I'll fail at this, so I'll put the I'll put the cocktail angle up, and we'll see. Maybe I absolutely fail at this. We'll see. We'll see. I'm gonna very precari uh, precariously. I'm gonna do this. There's no coaster down there, and uh, no funnel as well. So let's see, am I really good? Oh my goodness gracious. Just look at me getting overconfident here. Absolutely incredible. Nice though, very nice though, so far. This might take a hot minute. So how's everybody's week been so far? Mine's been pretty good. I was out sick on Monday. I just wasn't feeling it, so. Took a little bit of a sick day there. Skip stream as well. I'm looking forward to getting to the end of Super Mario 64. This will be the second time in my life that I collect all 120 stars. Looking forward to it. I love that game. Did anybody go see the, the, the Mario movie? I really, really liked it. I think one of my favorite characters in the Mario universe is, has, and will continue to be Princess Peach. And I just, I just saw her in a whole new light in this movie, and I absolutely appreciated it. One of my favorite games growing up, although I didn't play too, too much of it, was that Super Princess Peach game where you had all the power-ups based on emotions. I felt that. I felt that, like, in my soul, the young person that I was at the time, and still continue to be. Look at that. 
absolutely, absolutely no spill. I'm very, very proud of myself there. And for that, pat on the back and a complimentary banana. Compliments of who? <laughs> The bartender, obviously. The ex-bartender, of which evidently, according to this guest book I have over here, there are multiple. That was actually pretty cool. A realization that I had the other day is that if this is a bar with an X, then we are all bar tenders with an X or X bartenders. And I was like, that is so cool. Brings us all together. Anyways, this is a nice full bottle of rum. Where did it come from? And where does it go? Into my shaker tin. Cotton Eye Joe. I don't know. I did a little skip thing there. So we added two ounces, about 59 milliliters of some dark rum. Could be Bumboo. Could be Myers. I'm not really sure. I haven't done. I don't do my research on brands unless they sponsor. Just kidding. I get curious sometimes. Sponsors are cool though. In any case, what we'll also need is a quarter of an ounce of Demerara sugar. I made some fresh Denny Sin sugar earlier today. Right before the game started, Demerara sugar is kind of like, Demerara simple syrup is kind of like regular simple syrup in the sense that you use specifically Demerara sugar. And I went to the store a while ago and I found a container that said specifically Demerara sugars. So that's what I'm using. And I need about a quarter of an ounce or about seven-ish milliliters of that. So I'll measure that out. I found that when I was making this syrup earlier, that comparatively to like say like a regular cane sugar syrup, it had almost like a maple syrup smell to it. It tastes mostly like um, like regular cane sugar syrup, but like there's something else there that is undeniably different because you know the tastes and the smells are all connected together. Just just kind of makes sense there. Um, I don't know. I, I like thought about like keeping ingredients up on the bar to showcase what's going in there. I just don't have enough space here, guys, so I'm just not going to do it. In any case, quarter of an ounce uh, or seven milliliters of your Demerara syrup, and you can also just use a simple syrup. It's whatever you've got access to. I found, too, that I realized that most, I feel like most people, when they think of, like, different flavored syrups, probably think of, like, the, I don't remember the brand name, but it's the stuff you find at, like, Starbucks and stuff. It's, like, the, the bottles of syrup that you can, like, buy at Target and stuff, and I've never actually tried to make cocktails with those. But I feel like it'd be, it'd be fun. Like, I mean, uh, people use that for like their coffees and stuff and lattes. And I just like, it never occurred to me that I can get those if I wanted like a quick pistachio syrup or a quick caramel syrup or a quick, I don't know, insert syrup here that exists out there. Burnt toffee or something like that. It just sounds absolutely delightful. And, uh, and I've been getting into things that are easier to mix recently, like instant coffee, for example. Not that bad. So the next ingredient that we're going to add is some fresh squeezed lime juice. We need half an ounce of that, which I'm going to get from this fresh lime that I got from the store today. Which, again, as I found out the other day, fresh limes, like the limes that you buy in the store, the, uh, they're, they're young. They're not ripe. Ripe limes are apparently yellow, um, at least according to the internet. And I just might be uh, the one zillennial out there that believes what the internet tells them. Um, so I might be wrong there. I've never actually seen a yellow lime before. So... Again, take that with a grain of salt. Well, before we juice things, we try to squeeze the peel a little bit to try to get most of the juices out of there. A habit that I'm trying to continue to foster at this beautiful bar here, an institute of education. Larrick says, morning, morning, morning are some of the more popular ones that I've seen. That and like, I feel like there's one that has a name at the end, something etty or something. But I do feel like I remember seeing the word monin or monin on the syrups that I've seen in the store. And to be fair, the first time that I noticed those syrups was at a Dunkin' Donuts. The second time that I noticed those syrups was at a friend's house of mine, and I realized that they were the same ones that I saw in, um, in, in Dunkin' Donuts, and I thought, oh my god, did you like get that from a Dunkin' Donuts? And they said, no, I bought it at Target where they bought it at Walmart. And lo and behold, as I was being a little more observant on my on my next supermarket visit, I did in fact find what could be called monin or otherwise syrup at the store. So it does exist, it is very prevalent out there, and it's probably accessible in your local jurisdiction. At least I imagine. Assuming that you're like, I guess, in the in the exportable area of the, um, the, the monin company, which I imagine is America. What a, what a privileged location that I live in. The, be the beautiful town, slimming cityscapes of Philadelphia. So what have we got in there so far? We've got some dark rum in there. We've also got some Demerara sugar, and we have some freshly squeezed lime juice, of which we added half an ounce, or about 15-ish milliliters there. Next, what we'll need is three quarters of an ounce, or about 22 milliliters of the banana puree, which we pureed earlier. Uh, it's, uh, it's had a little bit of time to settle now, which is wonderful, because I, I don't want to... There's no need to mix your cocktails, but they're still... Jittery, you know? Get them after they've calmed down a little bit. 
I'm going to try my best to pour out specifically three quarters of an ounce there. Or about 22 milliliters. This is very, very thick. It's a very... Whoa! Okay. All right. That's enough. Oh my goodness, that sound was delightful. Amy Chow says, I've seen a lot of Tarani syrups. It's Monin and Tarani. The, the Tarani was the one that I was thinking of, but I feel like I've definitely seen Monin as well, at least somewhere around me. In any case, so we got a little bit of our banana puree over there. I'll keep the rest of it off to the side. We're going to use it in the next version of the daiquiri that we make. The, the, fr the frozen version, I suppose, is probably the best way that I can think of describing it. Everything is in our cocktail shaker, and now all we need to do is give it a shake. So I'm going to grab myself. I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup with my, with my measuring jigger over here. I also said I'm getting more stuff. I will eventually be buying more uh, measuring majiggers as well because it's just, it's, it's, it's difficult, you know? When you make, I realized because before this version of the bar with an X existed, there was only ever one or two cocktails per stream. So I really never needed more of that stuff. But now we've expanded a little bit and made more recipes every week, which is absolutely, it's, it's a blast. And I love every minute of it, especially planning for it. Planning, planning these things is fun too. Um, that we just need, we need better accommodations over here. And as such, because there are beautiful supporters like y'all out there, and because I work a full-time job and like to support my own hobby without relying on other people, that it grows and it continues to do so. So we're going to add a couple of small ice cubes to our glass here. I'm going to try as best as I possibly can to crack this large cube into here without making a mess or hurting myself. And yet another technique that I am attempting to get better at. If anybody has tips, please help me. That actually did not work that bad this time. Picking up a little couple of my ice shards. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Put my knife away. Don't need any of that. Now what we're going to do is shake this. Banana daiquiri version number one, according to Bumboo.com. Bumboo.com? Bumboo.sovereign brands. Sovereign brands. Like royalty. Dot com. I'm going to give that a shake. It says specifically to shake for 20 seconds. Were you counting? I was not. I was probably wrong. And then we're going to pour that into... They have a little... They have a beautiful little saucer glass here. I'm going to grab one of those and switch up our angle over here and hopefully not drop anything because that would be absolutely catastrophic. It'd be terrible. Bring our little cocktail angle down here amidst the forest of bananas. Let me see those. Oh, you can just see my water cup. That's pretty cool. There we go. A little forest of bananas over here. Over there. Do it up here. Do there. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it off to the side a little bit. Because I'm actually going to do a little bit of a... Ooh, that doesn't really work there. Do a little bit of a garnish in the background. So what I'll do is I'll put this off to the side here. And I have a whole list of garnishes. Because I really want to garnish utilizing uh, banana peels. And so I had this whole, I printed out this whole thing. I took some pictures off the internet. We'll see what happens. I feel like this one would benefit mostly from a pineapple frond as well as a couple of slices of banana. So let me bring my, bring my cutting board back out again, as well as an unsuspecting banana. And uh, we're gonna get it, we're gonna get a little fancy with this. So, first what I'll do is, I guess, I'll cut the tip of the banana off. A little treat for the bucket. And what I'll do as well is I'm going to try to peel just a little bit. Kind of make a couple of slits down the side. Trying not to cut towards myself as I tend to do sometimes. Mistakenly. And just give a little bit of a peel. There's one. There's two. There's three. I don't know. There's four. Don't know if that's coming through on the camera very well. But uh, we're trying our best this over here. I'm going to get two... And one, two, three. I think three will actually fit there. I'll do one little tiny one as a snack for me. Two, one, two, three. Got a couple little bits there. Put this off to the side. We have plenty of bananas for this evening. It'll be great. Some of them we just use banana liqueur. That's okay. I'm going to see right there. Now I'm going to do in my freezer. I got a couple of pineapple prawns in here. Specifically for garnishing purposes. If I would have blanched these guys... They would have had a bit of a better color. Look at this. But uh, it's okay for now. So I have this off to the side. We'll do a double strain because we got a lot of pieces of those, uh, that banana in there. And we'll give this a nice little 
thing here, and then we'll garnish it on top. It's gonna be cool. A little bit of a shake. Gotta get all the stuff out of it. There we go. Honestly, could have used a bit more liquid there. Let me kind of push around the side a little bit. There's a lot of banana bits in there. It doesn't say specifically to double strain, but I'm doing it anyways. I don't know. Looking pretty good. Got a good bit of banana in there. I, I say trying to get all my things. I think I need better strainers too, to be honest. This, is, this works okay. I got a little more in there. There we go. Yeah, that's working. All right, cool, cool, cool. So we got that. Put that away. Now what we'll do, we'll take our little pineapple frond, adjust our angle just a tad bit more. Do it a little, a little above, a little above action. There we go. A little bit of lag as the song switched, apparently. There we go. Hello, you. Hello, you. One, this is a very small pineapple frond. So we're kind of precariously placing upon top. I think it actually wants to lean the other direction. Let me turn this around. Well, I guess I can take it now. I don't want to take a photo of it just yet. I want the people to see it first. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Don't spider the grass, the glass, kiddos. Your your patrons will thank you for it, or thank you for not spy. Thank you for not spidering. Thank you for not laying spider eggs in my bananas. Thank you so much. There we go. And the other part that I'll do, in fear that I might actually break this glass, is you ever have a caramelized banana before? That stuff's so good. Oh, my thing's on lock. There we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna torch the top of these banana slices to give a nice caramelized texture. It's gonna smell great. I don't know if this is gonna work super well, but I'm trying my damnedest. I'm caramelizing the bananas. Or at least I'm trying to. Let's see if we can catch some color changes there. Going for banana number one. Caramelization is happening. It's a slow and steady process, I guess. I've never done this before. Thank you all for joining me for this. Specifically with a banana. Actually, not that bad. That smells really good, too. Wow, I really like the smell of this. Cool. Oh, don't just spray propane on them. That'd be a bad idea. Oh, I think I need to. Nope. All right, that's it. That's all the <laughs> that's all the torching that we get, apparently. That's great. You want me to slow roast them or something downstairs? No, there's not enough time for that. Thank you so much for asking, though, dearest. That's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. It smells so good up here. Oh, my goodness gracious. All right. Well, that looks great. Let me swap that back to my angle. We'll give this a bit of a taste. Let me put this off to the put these guys off to the side. Oh, it smells so good up here. Wow, I love the smell of that. <coughs> Sorry, loud noises. It happens sometimes. Ooh, that smells awesome. This guy, like burnt sugar. I love the smell of burnt sugar. It's like it's like s'mores up here right now, minus the chocolate. It is absolutely delightful. And I think this looks really pretty. The camera's going to take a little bit of a photo of that for my own reference. Trying not to slouch as I do so. So we have here is banana daiquiri number one. It's completely liquid. It is not filled with ice or anything like that. It is fine. It smells like burnt banana and a rum. The rum in particular has like, a, I've had Myers before and it's very molasses-y to me. Like molasses. So this is like a very burnt sugar taste as well as like a almost, almost like tough latte taste. Mm. It's rum forward. Very, very prevalent on those sugar notes. The lime juice is pairing with it super duper well. I'm not a huge fan of things that are sour. This is only tart. There is an en enough sweetness from, I guess, the piece of banana that's about to fall in there, as well as the demerara sugar that we added, that it's balancing things out so, so pleasantly. The demerara sugar that I made was weighed out one to one uh, by weights. I measured the things out in grams and stuff. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, 
It tastes really, really good. The smell of the burnt bananas on top of it really can like contextualizes uh, the rum in, in question here. It's got, I would say, previously I'd say it has like these burnt wood notes to them, but with the roasted banana literally right in front of my face, I stand by that. Even even more so now than I did previously. That's really good. Wow. And the the texture of the banana is not lost at all. Like, I think I'm realizing all of the sweetness is is from the banana. I don't think there might be a little bit of it coming from the Demerara, but that sweet flavor that I'm getting now is absolutely banana. Now, let me take a actually, let me take a bite of one of these guys. Oh, one of them just fell in there. Mm. That is so good. Wow, I love that. And honestly, at this point, there's there's no there's no point in just letting these things hang anymore. That's just pineapple frond. That doesn't taste good. Put it in the bucket. It's great. That is a, that is a good good drink. I will say, comparatively to other drinks, you can taste the rum here. It's prevalent, but it's like a it's like a banana rum. Uh, I'd be curious to know whether how good the, how this would taste with bamboo specific original rum. I've been told that some rums out there, like for example, a Plantation Three Star, which I used to have in my collection, but I ran out of and just never bought more of, has like this funk associated with it. To me, I get funk from things like Cachaca, which is which the one that I have, LeBlanc, is very ripe banana smelling and flavorful to me. And I feel like that would go really well in something like this. And to be honest, I've never used the, I don't think I've used the Cachaca with real banana before. It's not on tonight's menu, but maybe one day, maybe one day we will. This is good. Banana daiquiri number one is a success. That's really, really tasty. All right, so I'll put that off to the side. Banana daiquiri number two. The other way that you can make it is you make it a little more frozen. You add some ice to your, you add some ice to your blender here and you blend everything together to make something a little bit different. I realized that for this version of the recipe, it calls for an entire banana as as the proportion for blending everything together as well as the other constituents that we're adding i'm gonna add this whole banana to it so i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take the banana puree that i already have in the blender and i'm gonna put it into one of my containers over here and save it for another time maybe freeze it a little bit um that feels like that would make sense because we'll use that we'll use that in this household i need to grab one of my containers that is clear enough for me to ah, there we go grab one of these little dudes little little to-go glass Try to try to try not to waste things around here. Just feels like a waste, you know. But I'll pour all that out into this little container here. Anna can probably use this. She's got a wonderful, wonderful banana bread recipe. I do not know what it is off the top of my head, or I would absolutely shout it from the rooftops because it is. It's delicious. Oh my goodness. Uh, Anna's banana bread, uh, as well as this banana pure bri, is also pretty good. It's kind of. Kind of browned out a little bit. It's been sitting for a hot second. But I'm just gonna throw this in the freezer and uh, preserve it for another time. Excellent. What I'll do is I'll, I'll while I'm in here, I'm gonna grab the ice that is going to become our crushed ice, which is some little bits of candy cane ice. It just it's easy. It's easy to blend because they're very very small in form factor. Let me grab myself a coaster, a stiff one for this very very beautiful looking glass. I will put it, again, not too much space in this bar. We'll take one of the banana sets, we'll put them back here, and I will place one of our banana cocktails in place of one of the banana bushels. And being that it's just gonna sit there, I'm gonna take the pineapple front from before. A little more damp now, and definitely more flaccid than it seemed earlier, but uh, here, I'll put that right up on top there. It's got a little bit of flair associated with it. It's cool stuff. So, banana daiquiri number two, involves a similar recipe to what we had earlier with the banana daiquiri number one. Number one included some rum, some lime juice, some pine uh, whoa, banana puree, as well as some demerara syrup. In this case, what we're doing is we're adding two different types of rum, one being a Jamaican rum and one being some other white rum. This particular recipe from Punch Drink recommends a plantation and a plantation three star respectively. We add banana liqueur in addition to the banana, and then we add our demerara syrup like we did previously, lime juice like we did previously, and we add some crushed ice in there, which I'm gonna use these little candy canes because the winter season is behind us. And uh, I don't know, keep it light, keep it cool because it's not quite summer yet. So that makes sense in my brain. 
And we'll add that to a blender and we'll just it will blend away. Blend until smooth, pour into our hurricane glass. I think I have glasses that are, well, I don't have any hurricane glasses specifically, but I, I've got something that looks like it'll probably do. So uh, that's what we'll do. I will grab the other half of Hamilton and we'll bring them back up here. Here we go. Place our blender back on its perch. Put it off to the side over here. I have this beautiful frozen banana that looks like it's more inclined to be uh, properly removed from, from the peel that it lays within. And uh, well, we're just gonna see how this goes with banana daiquiri number two. Oh, there we go. Takes this off to the side. The lime juice is making me a little, a little refluxy. So if I'm drinking a lot of water, it's because we're drinking alcohol. That's why, obviously. So what we need in our container is obviously we're going to need a whole banana in there. I personally recommend if you're going to do anything like blended like that, you can go a little less ham on the ice if you use a frozen banana. It's got ice crystals in for you. It, it's just, you know, it makes your job a little bit easier. At least uh, that's what I'm led to believe. We're about to find out whether I'm talking out of my ass or talking out of my brain, I suppose. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of score this thing down the side. It's a lot easier to do now than it was previously. And we're just going to kind of peel it from its skin. I bet if I just kind of pop this thing in half, it'll be just, just fine. Always remember to cut away from yourself. It's probably common knowledge, but you know, in the world that we live in now where people just have so much different ways of thinking, I, I, I shudder to call anything common knowledge. It bears repeating. It's important. So, peel one part of our frozen banana off. An offering to the bucket. Excellent. The bucket loves that. And there we go. Totally frozen banana. I'm just going to cut that up a little bit more so it's a little smaller, easier for our Hamilton to digest and completely destroy. And um, we also need some crushed ice in there. And the thing that I'm going to use for our crushed ice are these little candy cane ice cubes. So I'm just going to pop off like... I don't know. It says crushed ice. I don't exactly know how much crushed ice we need, so I'm just going to put all of it in there. I really don't use these guys very much. Uh, the little silicon container that they sit within is just a little too flimsy, and uh, it just it makes putting them into the freezer difficult. Taking them out of the freezer, it's fine because everything's frozen. But putting them into the freezer is difficult to do without, like, spilling it all over the place. And I'll probably give them a wash. I feel like that's necessary. So now we've got... According to our recipe, one and a half cups of crushed ice. It may be a little more, maybe a little less. I put a frozen banana in there, so I think we'll probably be just fine. And if not, you can always add some more ice if it's not thick enough for you. And if it's too thick, add a little bit of water to there or some more rum. It's whatever you want to choose, honestly. But what we'll add now is I'm doing this a little bit in a different order because I just have ingredients available, so we're just going to go with that. We need to add a half an ounce of lime juice. There's still a little bit more lime juice in this container here, so I'm going to grab my measuring majigger. I'm gonna grab my juicer once more. I'm gonna see how much more juice that I can get out of this lime. Makes sense. The limes that I think we had on here last week gave about a full ounce per lime, or maybe like half an ounce per lime. They were kind of small limes, all things considered. This one was... I almost got a full ounce out of this guy. There we go. And... Do a little bit more. Just one more, one more like pump. Yeah, that's enough. That's good there. Keep the rest of that on here. I think we'll probably use more lime juice later, but honestly, not so sure. Move it over here. Add a half an ounce or 15 milliliters of your lime juice to, to your blender. I don't think we need to do any more cutting. We do not. So I will place this back off to the side and bring our measuring majigger back out here. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add half an ounce of that Demerara syrup. I'm glad that I kept it out a little bit. Previously, I think we used, it was a quarter of an ounce or about seven milliliters in the banana daiquiri, the first banana daiquiri recipe, the unfrozen one. And this one is twice that. So whatever makes it easier for you. Half an ounce, 15 milliliters of your Demerara simple syrup. Nice. All right. So we had our ice, our banana, our lime juice, our demerara. We need some banana liqueur, white rum, and Jamaican rum. I don't think I have any white rum left in this apartment. I remember specifically thinking the other day, I need to go get some rum. I bet we have some Bacardi, and the, the, the Bacardi container is totally empty. So I have no white rum. So uh, I'm just going to use 
whatever other rum that I have. I'm gonna go down and check and see what we got. We've got that cachaca if we wanna use it. We've got some spiced rum. I know that there are recipes that call specifically for spiced rum this evening, and I just don't wanna, uh, don't wanna put myself in that position. Ah, got some goslings down here. We'll do, we'll do the black seal. I literally never, this thing never sees the light of day because I just refuse to use it. So what I'll do is I'll grab the Jamaican rum from before, or Myers rum, the one that actually says Jamaican on it. And um, Gosling's is Bermudan, apparently. You're supposed to use a white rum and a dark rum. I'm using a dark rum and a, another dark rum, but one's from Bermuda and one's from Jamaica. So that's just what we're using. Just use whatever you've got. All else fails, if you really, really want to do the drink again, just go back to it when you have the ingredients. There's no pressure there. So you need a full ounce of each of these, or about 30 milliliters each. Maybe I'll finish off the goslings today. Nope. I've had the goslings in my collection since I began bartending. I just don't use it very much because I think it originally called for, oh no, 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 actually not since the beginning. In the beginning I had, there was a Bacardi, I think a Bacardi black and a Bacardi white. And I had that because in the one set of bartending classes that I took, uh, they were like, well, some recipe calls for white rum, some recipes call for dark rum, black rum, white rum, light rum, whatever you call it. And I was like, oh my God, I gotta get what's most easily accessible for both of them. So I just went with a Bacardi. They're fine, kind of basic, but you know what? Different strokes, different folks. I like things with a little more flavor because that means I get to try to piece, we're like, piece apart the different flavors that exist in the different cocktails that I'm making for my own flavor palette. But like, you know, if you don't use it very often, it's a perfectly fine rum. And I believe it's aged too. I didn't realize, but the Bacardi rums, I think the white ones are actually, I think all of them, I guess, are aged. I don't know. In any case, we added one ounce, 30 milliliters of one type of rum, Jamaican rum, the Myers in this case, and one ounce of the white rum, we used a uh, Bermudan Gosling's Black Seal Rum this time, not the white rum. I just don't have it. And now we're gonna add a full ounce of banana liqueur. The banana liqueur that I have, and hold by, because it's the only banana liqueur I've ever had, it's not creme de banana, it's 99 bananas, 100 proof banana schnapps. That's just what I have. I've never gone out of my way to buy creme de banana because I went to the store one time to try to buy it and I found this instead and I just, I needed banana. So I just never got any more. It smells like candy and I love it. It's great. Speaking of candy, I realize, I'm thinking about it now. One of the recipes that we'll cover this evening is not banana flavored at all. Although it kind of is a little bit of a teaser. There's been this, I've seen this viral thing going around of people rediscovering that if you take banana plus other flavors and combine them together, you get bubble gum. That's a thing. Bubble gum, I think, is a flavor combo of like cherry and a little bit of like strawberry in there and banana. If you put them all together, it tastes like bubblegum. So I've got some bubblegum vodka that we're gonna use to compare the taste to a bubblegum cocktail in two different ways to see whether or not that this these banana combos actually taste like bubblegum. Or at least in this case, double bubble bubble gum. And I'm looking forward to it because it's been a hot minute since my last bubblegum cocktail. So now that we put everything together. We have our rum, our rum, our banana, our banana liqueur, our demerara syrup, our lime juice, and the crushed ice in there, or what will eventually become crushed ice. We're going to combine that all together, and we're going to put it into some tiki hurricane type glass. Um, whatever is most prevalent. Um, I'm just going to pick the one that I'm thinking of, and if I'm wrong, then we just accept it at that. Plug in Hamilton. Great. I'm very glad that I didn't have any buttons clicked down. Otherwise, that would have been absolutely catastrophic. Sound warning, everybody. I'm turning on the blender. And it says, what does this say? Combine in a blender and blend until smooth. So there is probably a smooth option. Puree, smoothie, icy drink. Yeah, that's what I'm going for. Icy drink. Button. Feels smooth. It doesn't look smooth. That's smooth. That is very, very smooth. 
The longer this blends, the more it sounds like a Zoom call where someone's internet is failing. You're welcome. I might actually, I've been considering recently in the, in the effort to make things better around here of getting like one of those like stream decks where I can click buttons with my feet and it'll like switch the camera angle or dim the sound a little bit so like people's eardrums are just completely ruptured. If this is something that interests you, please let me know and we will pri we'll prioritize it up in the with an studio care package. So this is pretty much completely blended. I want it to be a lot more thicker than it is now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into my freezer and I'm gonna get more ice because I just, I, I need more of it. It just feels like it needs to be more icy. So the next ice ices that we're going to make the victim this evening are these uh, Disney ice cubes. We have one that is in the shape of a Mickey balloon, one that's in the shape of a bow tie, one that's in the shape of Mickey's pants, one in the shape of Goofy's hat, one in the shape of Mickey Mouse's face, one in the shape of Donald Duck's hat, one in the shape of an acorn for Chip and Dale, I believe, one in the shape of one of those like Mickey Mouse like fun popsicles, and then one of the castle itself. There we go. And I'll clean that. So into the bucket it goes, and we'll blend it up again. The banana episode, aka the roast the blender noises episode. I love it, and I can't unhear it, and it really does. I've been on a number of Zoom calls. That and the whole terrifying leap pad thing. Sound warning. <laughs> I'm about. I, I got the my my internet. In, my internet's about to. I, I can't. Can anyone still hear me? My internet. My internet's not my. You can't hear me. Microphone working? Oh. Hold on there. Hold your horses, pal. Oh, yeah, my God. So, so as I, I guess we're just going to go with this. As I was saying at our meeting on Tuesday, I think we need to put more resources into the firmware. Firmware programming. That's exactly how my meetings go with the boys overseas. Sounds aggressive. Be aggressive. Be -e aggressive. You would support firmware? You'd support firmware? <laughs> no. Anyway, this is this is a nice consistency. But it's not, I don't know, it, this seems to make me think that like it should have a very, very thick icy consistency to it, but I don't really feel like putting in any more effort than I have already. And this looks delightful, so we're gonna go for it. Is it singing baritone now? Let's fix it, fix it with the software. It's true, anything that falls through our firmware winds up getting picked up by our software. That's just how it works. All right, let me unplug Hamilton. I love it. Hamilton like the musical. Duh. Their name was Beach Hamilton. Beach Hamilton. Or something like that. In any case, so now we have our completely pureed cocktail. We're gonna put it all into a hurricane type glass. We're gonna garnish it with a lime wheel and a little cocktail umbrella. So I'm gonna preemptively, before I put things into the glass and switch the angle, I'm gonna find a cocktail umbrella. And because we like to do things up around here, I'm gonna grab one of my favorite color and um one of another color because we we drink we drink for each other around here, right? Grab a couple of those. I need to get a lime wheel. I'm just gonna cut that off screen. It's it's simple enough. This one's still got a little bit of a sticker on it. That's pretty cool. That's pretty yeah. That's pretty awesome. Just a, just a little bit of the peel. It's okay. I'm not eating it or anything. That's gonna be great. Bringing the cocktail angle over here. I'm gonna see if I can angle it up first before I switch it, so we don't get this weird thing with our face. Oh, look at that. It's kind of my face. There we go. Let's take a look at that. Down a little bit. Uh, there. There we go. Looking all right to me. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour it on in and garnish accordingly. This is our frozen banana daiquiri. Oh my god. Did we get all of it? Oh, did we get all of it? Oh my god. I love it when things measure out perfectly. God, I love that. Wow so satisfying my good golly goodness that's great such satisfaction and it's guaranteed so now what we're gonna do we're gonna garnish that with a little with a little lime wheel try to sit inside of that there's enough thickness where it's gonna be okay we're gonna hide the sticker below the surface nobody needs to see that and then we'll take 
one cocktail umbrella. So this side, we got one that's yellow for the people who like yellow and for the umbrella, the, uh, the, the bananas themselves. Come on now. There we go. A nice little thing there. I gotta put the, I gotta put the little, I realized that I usually take off the, um, the little rubber band thing. It's specifically in there to keep things up. Put one over here. This one's for y'all. Take off the big, see, this is, this is how you do it. You have two rubber bands on here. This one comes off. If, if you can get it off, there we go, there we go. Gone. Another tiny one. Mm, tiny one right there, it's a little pink thing. And we push it up. There is no specific correct way of doing this, but there is a way that works pretty well. And there we go. And this one's for me. Can you really see all the umbrellas? I don't really know, but uh, here we are. There we go. Just two little umbrellas. It's just our line. It's you know that is an excellent. I love this. Love this image here. I need to do it a little more justice. Oh, that is so cute. I love that. <laughs> Look at this little guy. Just absolutely chilling with it. I'll let that sit there for a second. That is so cute. Oh my goodness gracious. I love that. A little dude. Oh, this also definitely needs a, a straw. I am not gonna drink this without a straw. And I know I have a yellow one around you. Yeah, yeah we do. Yeah, we do. Got a little straw that'll sneak in from the back. I don't have like, oh, which maybe it should be a, a bendy straw. It's kind of thick. Nah, we're gonna do a bendy straw. I feel better about that. When I think of my vacations, I think of bendy straws. Gotta be bendy straws. And I know there's a yellow one around here somewhere. There we go. This is the sound of a bendy straw. Yeah, that's the sound of the bendy straw. I'll kind of snake that in over here. Try not to ruin the beautiful image that we have here. There we go. It reminds me of Mickey. Mickey, Mickey Mouse. That's what it's all about. Mickey Mouse. It's great. Oh, by the way, that I did I mention that the photo command is working again? I fixed it. As it turned out, there was something going on with OBS and it seemed that the web socket was not turning on properly. So what happened was it was trying to take a picture, but it couldn't connect to the web socket. So every time that the disk, the, the chat bot would ask OBS, what scene is it? It would say, I don't know what scene it is. You don't have permission for me to tell you. And everyone was disappointed, uh, but it works now. Everything is fixed and things keep getting better every single day. So this is our frozen banana daiquiri. And then it's really difficult to drink through a straw of that size. So actually, I'm going to go back to the big straw. Which, if I play my cards right, can fit over top of the small straw. There we go. Yep. 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 I don't know why I did it this way, but I did. Maybe if I'm lucky, I'll suck up the straw itself. This is dangerous. Don't let kids do this. Th there's alcohol here. Please don't let kids do this. I did it. That one's for the bucket. That straw is for the bucket. That was great. It's the Minions Daiquiri. Banana, 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 or something like that. I never watched the Minions movie. I just like Barbara Ann. It's a great song. Anyway, I've taken like three sips of this thing and have yet to provide any sort of thoughts on it at all. And it's because I just don't feel like it. It's a good drink. That's it. Show's over. I'm kidding. Absolutely not. So it's, it's good. It tastes similar to the other one. It is rum forward and it is sweet banana forward. It's a little tart, just a little tart, but it's got that extra texture of the ice in there now and it just makes it makes it a little more full a little more it's almost like i'm sucking up the banana itself it feels very smoothie like which makes a lot of sense there if i'm being perfectly honest it's pretty good it's really good 
That was a spot on impression. Thank you so much. I would like to be a voice actor someday, maybe. If anybody out there does projects and needs a voice actor, I'll do it for free. I just li I like these cords like to be utilized and lubricated with booze. Compared to the other daiquiri, the other version of it, it is a lot more thick. It has a thickness, obviously, because we have a bunch of ice in there. And uh, one has been sitting around for a little bit longer. But let me see if I can get a little bit of a difference going on here. So, right off the bat, there is a lot more of the rum being showcased in the liquid version of the daiquiri. And I think that kind of makes sense. There was, I think, a full two ounces of rum in both the frozen version and the unfrozen version. However, the unfrozen version has significantly less banana in it. It's got a lot less stuff in there that's going to water down the flavor and take away some of the alcohol component there. Comparatively, I think... I'm just double checking this. This has a dryness, which reminds me a lot of the banana peel itself. It might be coming from the the like the but the banana that's in there, or maybe we got a little bit of bits in there. Because I imagine there could have been a little bit of the peel in there, but if I strained it out, I don't know whether it's supposed to go through to the other side. The frozen one definitely tastes more like a banana, in in the sense that there's not as much rum flavor. There's not as much sweetness there, and there's not as much tartness either. They are very, very similar comparatively. One has, is significantly warmer than the other one, so I think that's that's definitely something to take note of in the comparison there. But I would say, if you are the kind of person, I guess it really depends on the situation, right? If you're on the beach and you want something to stay cold for warmer, and you don't have, let's say, a cooler nearby to put your fancy champagne saucer in as you go out and wade in the water, you might want something that's a little more frozen. It keeps its form a little bit more, you can put fancy dancy garnishes on it, and it should stay cooler for longer. But if you are like at a bar and you just want that, you just want that banana, like a hint of banana, but you're really going for like a new rum that you want to try banana daiquiri unfrozen not frozen that would be a nice way to, to sample the waters a little bit because i've been told that a lot of i haven't done a really really in-depth comparison of rums before but some rums can have those funky ripe banana notes to them like cachaca because that's the one that i know off the top of my head so if you were trying to do a little comparison between the two a banana daiquiri might be a good way to kind of summarize across them like i think the last time i did a rum comparison in my own personal time was between rum and cokes because coke is going to taste the same every single time some of these rums have different characteristics that come through especially pairing with like the caramel flavor of the cola and that sassafrasy notes i only know that because i have sassafras bitters it does kind of taste like coca-cola when you add it to your um to your old fashions and stuff Suffice to say, I like the frozen one better because I like stuff that's a little less tart and this is a little less tart, it's more full, it's more banana. And despite the fact that I've had an entire banana so far today, so so long as this stream is concerned, I, uh, I'm into it. I like bananas. And it seems every single time I try to drink the, the original banana daiquiri, it's just a little, just a little too tart for me. I'm going to take a big gulp of water to wash all that gunk down. Either way, both very, very, very tasty. Two versions of the banana daiquiri. I'm going to keep this one with me. I like this one considerably. And I should also fill up on water because uh, that's got, that's got elk in it, dude. Oh, and apparently I had forgotten my pineapple frond must go back. Not frond isn't my friend. I don't make friends with pineapples. I kill them. It's tough to become close with those who you murder. Um, however, I don't know where I was going with that train of thought. This one will stay with me. Tasty. Mmm. And water. That's what I was doing. That's what I was doing. Stop thinking about fresca homicide or something. Fresca like fruits and stuff. I don't speak Spanish. In any case, so we've made two banana daiquiris so far. Banana drinks. Bananas. That's tonight's theme. Bananas. Bananas because today is National Banana Day. In memory of, it was Gros Michel, the banana that maybe your grandparents were eating. It's gone now. I mean, it's probably out there somewhere. I'm sure you can still get a ha your hands on it, but it's susceptible to the Panama disease. And so because of that, and because all bananas are basically clones of one another within a particular genus, uh, if, it, if it kills one, all the other ones are susceptible to that. The bananas that you know and love today are Cavendish bananas or Cavendish. Again, don't really know if there's a translation there or whatever, but uh, they're good. I, I find that in the past, there's a candy that I love. 
Those candies are called runts, and I have some in this, ba this candy bag over here, and they come in banana form. You can see a bit of the, let me, let me pull the angle over here a little bit. We've got these little banana runts in here. Ignore the other candies in there. We've got some products going on in the background. These are so tasty. It is like, when I think of banana flavor, I think of these candies here. And apparently when I think of banana flavor, I'm informed that the banana flavor that I'm thinking of in terms of like the, the confectionery banana is how a gross Michel banana would taste uh, as opposed to a Cavendish banana, which is slightly different, but still kind of banana-ish. It's like, it's like when you go and you get like a Dum Dum lollipop and they're like, oh, it's cherry flavored. Not all cherries taste like that. If you actually bitten into a cherry that like you got off the vine, it's probably gonna be a bit more tart. Those dum-dums are not tart to me, like at all. It just tastes like cherry. Like what my brain associates with the flavor of cherry as the corporations want me to believe, you know, so I can just keep having more of their product to compare it to. It makes a lot of sense. So when I think of banana, I think of the runts. When I think of the runts, supposedly I'm thinking of the Gross Michel and not the bananas that I would buy off the shelf today, which happen to be Cavendish. Do you get all that? I hope that you got all that. Good evening to the party people from Minnesota Taz. Hello there, and welcome everybody. Thank you everybody for popping in. Dr. Cat, thank you very much. You are now a welcome, welcome member of the bar. Tonight's bananas. It's all about bananas, Cavendish bananas. We've made two banana daiquiris so far, and both of them very, very, very tasty. One is frozen, one is otherwise. If you like spirits, go liquid. If you don't, and you like bananas, go the other way around. Yo, yo, oh, oh, absolutely. I'm Minnesota Taz. I'm on my bot account. Sorry. Oh, no, nope, no problem at all. I've got a bot account too. It lurks around here every once in a while and talks when provoked, like I do. Although I pro the difference between me and the bot is it talks when provoked and I talk when unprovoked. That's the difference here. I'm the human. So the next cocktail that we're gonna kick our way into is uh, I'll just introduce the next segment here and then see what else is going on over there. I see a lot of happening chats happening down there. It's very exciting. So the next thing that we have going on here is we have how to use the banana flavor itself. Those of you out there may be familiar with bubblegum, bubblegum flavor of things. When you think of a bubblegum, double bubble, you know, bubble tape thing, you think of a particular flavor. And that particular flavor in my brain corresponds to the color pink. Pink bubblegum, that's just what comes to mind. But bubblegum itself is a flavor that is like a combination of a couple different other flavors, no, notably being like strawberry, cherry, banana, most notably banana. I've seen a couple of videos out there on the interwebs recently being of people like kind of rediscovering that like, oh my God, when you take like grenadine and you combine it with banana liqueur or something like that, it tastes like bubble gum. Like, yes, yes it does. And that makes a lot of sense. So what I've got in my collection down here is I went to the, the, I went to the store and I found some double bubble bubble gum and I put it in vodka. And so now we have double bubble bubble gum vodka and it smells like double bubble, it tastes like double bubble. We'll get there. And we're gonna make two different versions of a bubble gum cocktail and we're just gonna try to see how close to the flavor of bubble gum that we can get with the next segment coming up here. So stick around if you'd like to. Let me update my board over here and we'll see what happening stuff is occurring. Unfortunately, I don't have like this big, eventually I need to get like a second monitor set up so I can actually look at chat while I'm doing things in the background, but alas, I cannot. I am technologically not so inclined. This is called, it's just called bubble gum. Double bubble bubble gum, double bubble bubble gum. How is that related to bananas? You'll see, you'll see, I'm sure of that. This setup is amazing. It stood out in the category. Oh, thank you, everybody. Taz Ray, thank you, Amundi. Absolutely, to the Ray. There we go. I feel that. Thank you very much. It's a product of a, about a year and a half of planning and whatnot. And I do things, I like to do them right. This is a bar that I found for free on the internet. All we needed to do was move it. It was great. Some lights I found off the internet. It's fun. Fun stuff indeed. So thank you so much for the compliment there. So we move in to the category of bubblegum. I think, I feel like, I don't know whether I wanna like, like arm my taste buds by chewing bubblegum as we make bubblegum. I feel like it's just like, for, for, a, for a stream that's based off of the theme of bananas, it just feels a little disingenuous. So instead, I'll take the half out eaten banana that I had previously, and um, I'll just munch on that. As we make the bubblegum, because con contextually speaking, that makes sense. So I'm gonna go to my collection here and pull up my bubblegum recipes. I have them in my recipe keeper app here. I have 
Bubblegum. Bazooka, zooka, bubblegum. Bubblegum. And we can make it two different ways. I have a little book back here that was given to me by my mother once upon a time ago. Uh, she used to be a bartender, and now I'm a bartender in the comfort of my own home. And it's great. In this book is two different uh, versions of a bubblegum cocktail. In one case, we use some vodka, some Southern Comfort, banana liqueur, grenadine, cream, shake it all up together, and you have your bubblegum there. In the second version, we're using melon liqueur, a notable difference than the vodka in the first one, amaretto, also different than the first one, and then we add some milk or cream and grenadine on top of that. There is no banana in that one. So in one case, I'm gonna use some banana schnapps. In the other case, we're gonna use some Midori green melon liqueur. And we're gonna see what gets us closer to what looks like bubblegum and what tastes like bubblegum. Cause that feels like a pretty good comparison and I've never actually done it before. So this will be a little bit of an experience for everybody, including myself. So that's what we'll go with. I will make, both of them get, get both of them get shaken. Uh, both of them get strained into a glass. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to clean out one of the shakers that I have over here. We'll build two both at the same time. We'll shake them at the same time. We'll pour them out and then we'll do our comparison. So if you'll give me just a moment to do a little bit of cleaning over here, I'm getting some more shakers uh, later on. Um, I have the tax return is coming in real soon. And what do I plan on spending my tax return on? You guessed it, stream things because this is a really, really fun hobby. And ever since I joined my fraternity a while ago, I've been trying to find better ways to make alcohol more enjoyable for everybody. And lo and behold, this seems to be working. Ooh, hoo -hoo. the hot dish gave me a shout out. Thank you, the hot dish. Only the hottest of dishes. There, there's nothing really hot over here. Although we were making some syrup earlier. Actually, that was before the stream started. I actually lied about that. I just saw Moonblight pop in, Moonblight Wolf. That is an awesome name. I love that. It reminds me very much of, I don't know. I don't actually have, and, and I may be looking way too far into this, but it reminds me of Fursonas. And it reminds me of, if I ever had one, it would be, a sea lion because of the sounds that they make. If I know, I know sea lions do not have fur, so in which case they're blubbery, I guess? Smoothies? Sea I don't really know. Or selkie, I guess. I'm not so sure. Sea lions are awesome. If you've never heard a sea lion yell before, you should Google that right now. They sound like grown men screaming and it's something like this. Kind of, kind of Wookiee-like, but a little uh, different great and i love sea lions so much the last time that anna and i went to sea world I, I literally wanted to do nothing else but hang by the sea lions it was <laughs> i love the sea lions they're so great okay so we have shaker number one we got shaker number two by nature of this shaker versus the other one i can put some ice into this one first let it come down to temperature and then we'll pour off of the excess liquid i'm not going to do that for this one because it would be kind of difficult to put liquid into the ice as it's melting and discard all of the water stuff there. It kind of makes sense. Moonblight says, I am not a furry, but I love how the follow went. It's a wonderful tangent, and I'm glad that I followed. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. It just reminded me as such. I know one, maybe two in my life, but I don't talk to them very often. I'd like to know a little bit more about them. I feel like, I feel like, I, I don't want to go too far, too far on a tangent here, but I feel like furries just get a bad rap. People think it's all about like a weird sex cult and stuff like that. And at least from my knowledge, I feel like that's the exception. Not the rule. However, you live the way that you want to live, dude. If you get off from fur and animals and stuff, just like, just like, watch out. Animals have some diseases that can be transmitted to humans. And humans have some diseases that you can transmit to each other, even if you're dressed up as animals. Anyway, that, that tangent is over. I've got some ice that's cooling in here. It's gonna, gonna melt just a little bit. And uh, we'll grab some ingredients for all the other stuff. So, in shaker tin number one, we have the first bubblegum recipe, what the bartender's black book is calling bubblegum. In the second shaker over here, we'll add the ingredients for bubblegum two, which is just, it's, it's bubblegum two, as opposed to bubblegum one. So in one, uh, one glass, we'll add some vodka, and the other one will get some melon liqueur. So I gotta go back and get some Midori. And I've got some Tito's. Whoops, actually, I've got some absolute vodka that decided to greet me by falling onto the floor. So we're gonna use that one instead. Here's a tiny little lip, nip of absolute and some Midori. It's the green stuff. And it kind of tastes like cotton candy, in my opinion. Welcome to the party there, Minnesota. I love that. The sea lion roar scared my cat, Fiona. I am so sorry, Fiona specifically. And I'm also sorry, Nya Nya Blue, because I feel like you and Fiona's 
like, I feel like you must be connected there. So if I apologize to the one, I must apologize to the other. I will not be making that sound again. Not unless we should. I can be convinced either way. In any case, so we're going to add a single ounce of vodka to bubblegum number one and a single ounce of melon liqueur to the other one. Both of those will be 30 milliliters. I've got also two measuring majiggers. So we'll put the funny colored one, the metric one over there. Oh, well, I guess one is a metric jigger. So it measures up to a total of 50 milliliters and one is a not metric jigger. So it actually measures up to two ounces, which is about 59 ish. So it's okay. Either way, so long as your ratios remain consistent, it's more or less the same drink. You just use a total, it's a total different amount of alcohol, so that's all right. So in this glass goes my equivalent of one ounce. In this case, it's gonna be more like 25 milliliters as opposed to 30. Put that at the inside. And that's got our green liqueur in there. Love that, it's the Midori. Oh my goodness. LOL, apology accepted, sweet! You got that little meat boy like. I dig that. I dig that indeed. In the other glass, we get a single ounce of absolute vodka. I completely forgot I had this here. Actually, is that just an ounce? Oh, there is a single ounce of absolute vodka. Absolutely. This empty container is going to be recycled, probably. Oh, Rich! Rich, what a guy! Congratulations to Harry out there. Oh, Harry, my guy. Oh, if only you could be here. Only you could be here today. Rich, you were so kind, my friend. You were absolutely kind indeed. That's so cool. How do we celebrate for that? I've got a party horn back here. Whoa, actually, wait, no, 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 no. This was a gift given to the community. Therefore, it is only fitting that we use the community kazoo to celebrate the occasion. So as I get the next ingredient, which is Southern Comfort and Amaretto, uh, here's a little ditty I just invented for you. so kind to each other so i got whoa southern comfort on this side and we've got some amaretto on the other side it is also of note here that the recipe says that you can use either amaretto or creme de new york that's n-o-u-y-a-x and i believe that's supposed to be creme de almond if i'm correct in saying that i'm down for it kazoo kazoo who said kazoo you said kazoo i didn't say kazoo we need a single ounce of both of these or about 30 milliliters like before and remember in my metric jigger it's going to be about 25 milliliters because it just measures a little bit differently than the other one does i haven't had um haven't had soco in a while and apparently i don't have much left of it soco is a unique liqueur in the sense that it has a couple of different flavors what exactly those flavors are um soco describes as fruit and spices and it's calling itself whiskey, which I don't know if that's entirely correct, but you know what? You just you just gotta take what you got. So that's what we have. I'll put my SoCo away. The bottle does not really want to seal. I forgot to put the Midori away as well. I'd love to keep the bottles out for the purposes of like actually showcasing where we've been. However, I just don't have a lot of space over here, so this is just kind of what we work with. And I need a single ounce of my Lazzaroni Amaretto. In terms of the lack of space, you might actually notice me reaching over like everything. I am a very small individual and I work with what I have. It's um, it's a talent that I market. I don't, I don't know, <laughs> do I actually market it? I don't think the fact that I'm 5'6 is somewhere on my LinkedIn. And even still, comparatively, comparatively speaking, that's not small compared to everybody. Although it's small compared to most of the people that I know. So, so far in bubblegum number one, we have vodka and Southern Comfort, both in equal parts, 30 milliliters or about a single ounce each. In the second one, we have melon liqueur, which in this case is Midori, and some amaretto. So one so far, the flavor profile is kind of, it, it doesn't seem very bubblegummy. Instead, what it seems like is more like fruity spice, like fruit spices, think like a spiced apple or spiced cranberry. No, less on the cranberry. Southern Comfort to me is not very tart. And on the other side, we have melon liqueur and amaretto, so it's a little bit nutty. Very, very sweet, kind of biscotti type cookie, and cotton candy, which is the notes that I usually get from the melon liqueur. Or it could just be melon. Mel melon ish. Melon ish, which I think is a show technically. 
in any case, completely different type of melon. In that case, it's melon then. But so, where we go next is we add some banana liqueur to bubblegum number one, and we add some milk or cream to this one over here. I know that in bubblegum number one, we're also going to add some uh, cream as well. So, but we have to add some grenadine first. Actually, both of them call for grenadine, but in different orders. So actually, we're gonna do the milk and cream, milk slash cream in both of them at the same time. I guess this is where the recipes get, they, they intersect. One goes melon liqueur and amaretto. One gets vodka and Southern Comfort. Both get milk and or cream and grenadine, shake, bubblegum. Bazooka, zooka, bubblegum. And that's just kind of what we got there. Today happens to be National Amaretto Day. Is it really? It's also National Garlic Day. That's so cool. It's National Banana Day. It's evidently National Amaretto Day. And it's National Banana Day. Put that all on a drink and what do you have? A surprise in every sip, I suppose. So I need some cream. I got some cream in my cooler over here. I need some of that. I bought it fresh from the store today. Apologies if my shirt was taken up. This shirt used to be too big on me and then it shrunk in the wash. So here we are. Incredible. So we're going to add a single ounce of cream to both of our shakers. I, um, for the past couple streams, I've been using heavy cream and it really did provide a nice, like, level of texture to the drinks that we were making. However, I, I was running a little low and doing a lot of the shaking over here, I'm afraid that I'm going to wind up whipping my cocktail. So I got some light cream as well. So now we have a little bit of both depending on what we're trying to make. I think the calendar that I use for determining what holidays are available, I think it's called like daysoftheyear.com or something like that. That's where I get my sources from. If anybody else follows a different source, cool. Different strokes, different folks. There are, as I call my, my what? My 12th grade physics teacher, there are many ways to get to Walmart. So now that we added a single ounce or 30 milliliters of cream to all of these, next what we're going to add is a dash of grenadine to each of them. Now, I, I am against the idea of the dash, a, a single dash of each of them, because when I think of a dash, I think of a bitters container. A single dash of bitters is like nothing. Um, so I'm just going to put a full bar spoon into each of these, because I think that is a better way of measuring a dash in this case. Um, it's going to be a little bit, it's going to be a little off center because remember this one is being measured in milliliters. So it's at a base of 25 milliliters per ounce versus this one, which is 30 milliliters. I'm adding the same to both. If you want to get scientific with it, oops, but if you don't, then I think we're fine. So I'm going to add like a single bar spoon each some grenadine over here. That would be a very satisfying sound and a single bar spoon of grenadine over here. Hmm. If you can find, like, if you can get your, like, uh, get some grenadine at the store, that's pretty good. I will say if you can make your own grenadine using some, like, molasses, uh, um, pomegranate molasses and pomegranate juice and sugar and a little bit of orange blossom water, I would highly recommend that. This stuff has kept good for a very long time for me so far, and it tastes so much better than anything I've ever tasted out there that uses, like, grenadine in it, like a cherry coke or... Shirley Temple or otherwise, it's, just, it's so, it's so good. So now that we have vodka, Soco, banana liqueur. I completely forgot the banana liqueur in this one. So lest we not forget, we actually need some banana in there. I got 99 bananas and um, I've got 99 bananas, but a gross Michelle is not one of them. RIP. But long live the Cavendish banana. Indeed, indeed making sure that I'm not screwing up any proportions over here. It was vodka, soco, banana, grenadine, cream, and then melon liqueur, amaretto, milk, dash, grenadine. Yep, we good. So there's actually a bit more, there's a bit more liquid in the bubblegum number one, as opposed to the bubblegum number two in this case. So that's pretty good. And now both of these get shaken and, uh, and then we strain them into glasses. I'll get some glasses on the ready. They're over there. They're already ready. So now let's do a shake. I'm going to add ice to this guy and then do stuff for the other one. I also just noticed too that the, the bottom of this shaker over here feels loose. That worries me. I really like this shake. I, I kind of hate that shaker, but I really like it because it was a gift. Let me get some more ice on the free edge. Grab one big cube and then one of the little cubes. Oh, I thought I had a big cube on the standby. I was wrong. Oof. Ah, one big cube. 
I'll put it right there for just a moment. I'll crack some little cubes, I'll put those in first. Still working on my technique for actually cracking ice cubes, so if it looks a little childish, it is. Let's go for it. This is gonna be right near the microphone, so potential sound warning. Oh my God, that was like perfect. That was the second try this evening. So now that I have some ice over here that's been coming to temperature, it's gonna give off a little bit of water. I'm gonna pour off all that excess water into the bucket. And now we're good. Top one, top it twice, pour liquids into solids. I did this the wrong way, that's okay. Liquids in the solids, and then back the other direction, I suppose. There is a really interesting, mm. oh, because I have cream in there. Remember, cream is a dairy product, and dairy products and whatnot, when you add acids to them, such as some syrup that you've made, or lime juice and lemon juice and stuff, is gonna curdle a little bit. So there's a little bit of coloring here, a little bit of curdling. Curling's okay. It'll be, it'll be just fine. Our bubblegum vodka is on the side. Bubblegum one was in the tin container. Bubblegum two was in the plaid container. Hope I don't forget that. I'll shake them both at the same time. And hopefully neither of these shakers break, which would be very, very, very unfortunate. Bubblegum. I call that technique washing my windows. Both of them. That was great. Oh, I hope we caught the photo. I mean, that might have been a little too late. Oh my goodness, you gotta, gotta be quicker than that. Or maybe maybe it worked, I don't know. Okay, so now I need two glasses. Does, do either of these get strained over ice chilled? Strain into a chilled glass. Neither of them say what type of glass, so I'm just gonna go with uh, two glasses that look the same, I suppose. Oh, I've got my dice glass. Got my dice glasses. I love these things. Also a gift from a friend of mine. What a, what a wonderful social circle that we have. The bar with an X has many friends. All right, so let's give a little close up over here and see. I wanna to try to get as unbiased a view of both of these glasses as possible. So I'm gonna play around with this just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm trying. Let me do a little bit of rearranging. I want a really nice shot of both of these. So, let's go one over here. Put the banana tip away. One right here. That looks pretty good. Pretty good indeed. All right, cool. I am ready for both of them. This will be bubblegum number one in the this tin. And then bubblegum number two in the other one. Let's give that a pour. I'm gonna pour them both at the same time because I'm so cool and super talented, obviously. Put that off to the side. I'm gonna uncap both of these. Oh my goodness. Whoops, that's leaking. Hello. Both of them are supposed to be garnished with a bubblegum stick. I don't have bubblegum sticks, um, but I do have pieces of bubblegum somewhere at the bottom of this candy container. So, uh, please excuse me while I go searching in my candy container for just a moment. There is one bubble gum. There we go. And here is a second bubble gum. And uh, again, it's a, you're supposed to garnish, according to the book, you're supposed to garnish this with a, like, uh, what was it, a, a stick? A particular bubble gum stick? I don't have bubble gum sticks. I've got bubble gum cylinders so there's one bubblegum cylinder there's another bubblegum cylinder boop i don't exactly know the best ways to garnish these so what i'm going to try to do is i'm going to grab some two bamboo skewers and i'm just going to try as best as i possibly can to skewer these guys can i even can i even do that <laughs> that is kind of working that is totally working oh my god Wow. That totally worked. Wow. Well, there's one bubblegum skewer. Let's do another one. What's Ibi Chow saying over there? What if we dissolve the banana candies in spirits? You are onto something, and it might be something that we're already on. Maybe. 
I actually did not do the banana. I did not do the banana candies in uh, in spirits for this particular episode. But I am trying to plan a candy theme, so that may be appearing in the near future. So I've, I'm taking some of these, taking some of these bubble gums. That actually works out super well. Oh, that works out so well! My God. Okay, so now uh, pop a strainer on this one here, and technically the other the other one's already got a built-in strainer, so. We will go with that. I hate this strainer so much. Let me move my banana daiquiri out of the way. It's not providing the correct contrast. Here we go, bubblegum number one and bubblegum number two. Remember, one has a whole ounce of spirit more than the other. All right, that's apparently all we have, so that's what we get. Bubblegum number one and the bubblegum number two. So now, I don't know if it's capturing super duper well from this angle here. This one looks white, off whitish. This one kind of looks green. So for the purposes of color, ooh, comparison, neither of these look like the bubblegum spirits. Neither of them really look like the color of the bubblegum itself. If we added more grenadine, we'd be able to adjust the color a little bit more. But let's see how it tastes first. I'm more curious about that than the way that it looks. So, let me take my angle, move it back over here. We might bring that back and bring these, bring these colors up to the correct level. Again, one's a little more green, one's a little more red. So, adding more red to green is going to make it more red, obviously, which a little, with a little bit of, I think, yellowing effect going on there. I don't know, I'm not a color scientist. I'm an engineer. And apparently a mixologist, or so I've been told. So bubblegum number one. I think I think for the basis of, I think what I want to do is I want to try each of these first and see if they taste like bubblegum to me. And then we'll trace the bubblegum control to see whether or not it actually tastes like, and I have tasted this previously. This tastes like the bubblegum that we put on the sticks over here. I tried that off screen, but we'll try it on screen too, just to make sure that we trust each other. Bubblegum number one. Smells like bubblegum because I have a bubblegum stick on it. Pfft, duh. Smells slightly of banana. I wouldn't say it's any more bubblegummy. Like, like it's not super close to the bubblegum flavor. It just kind of smells slightly like banana. There's also some Southern Comfort in there. So like that could be adding another like fruity note to it. It's mostly... It's mostly banana. I'll give it that. That's really, that's really spirit forward. I don't think it tastes very much like bubble gum. To me, it's banana and something else that's just off-putting. I'm trying to think of exactly what that is. There's like a, like a almost, almost like bad fruit flavored thing. And I'm trying to think of what that mean, what, what I mean by that. It's almost like not rotten. But like getting funky, like fruit that's getting a little funky, and it's almost it's like, there's like a almost a citrusy note to that. I guess that's probably from the this is from Southern Comfort, right? Grenadine into the cream, the Soco. It's really really alcoholic because it's just got straight up vodka, and so there's not a lot of sweetness to bubblegum number one. It seems comparatively, in terms of color, it is the closest that we've gotten to bubblegum so far because it doesn't look green, but it kind of just tastes like. Like like a like a light cream-ish banana. Like not quite banana cream, but like in the same direction of it's it's I'm not a big fan of that. If amoxicillin was a drink, or tasted amoxicillin. But when you say amoxicillin, my mind thinks about prescription medication, and I feel like I've had bitter prescription medication that completely aside from the bitterness kind of does taste like that. A little bit. Maybe a little bit. Take a little water as a palate cleanser before we move on to bubblegum number two. Now I will say, I have made this exact recipe before, previously, like three or four years ago, right? Yes, I'm 25. Three or four years ago. So, and I put a star next to bubblegum number two. 
I have this memory of it looking red. It clearly does not look very red, at least not this time. However, I do have a star next to that one, and I know I put the star there. So this one might be a little more bubblegummy. Smells like Midori. Sweet melon. Smells super duper good. I love the way that it smells. It does not smell like bubblegum. It smells like Midori. And that is closer to bubblegum. You know, breathing in, it tastes like Midori. Breathing out, it tastes a little bit more like bubblegum. And I taste separately in there, I taste the, mid the Midori in there, which is melon, melon flavored. And I taste the amaretto in there. Like I completely forgot there was amaretto in there and I tasted that and the first thing I thought of was like, that's like sweet amaretto. It's great. I love the flavor of amaretto. So this is comparatively, I like bubblegum number two a lot more than I like bubblegum number one. Bubblegum number one is prescription medication. You just kind of have to take it, but at least it's bubblegum-ish. Banana in this case. And number two is like, mm, I like that. It's not quite bubblegum. I would call that almost more, almost, not quite, almost more cherry flavored. There's something that evokes the flavor of cherry to me, but it's not cherry. I know that. It's melon and such. Now, I also have the bubblegum flavor here. And again, I feel like this these two drinks were a lot more red the last time that I tried them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the grenadine out again. And I'm just gonna add more grenadine until the color matches up with what I remember. Because for me, at least, when a memory sticks around like that, it means that something something was hardwired there. And I want to trust my memory. As much as I don't believe in the efficacy of my memory, I want to believe. And it's that desire to believe that pushes us forward. So I'm going to get a bar spoon, and I'm going to add a little bit of grenadine. I'm not really measuring this out, just enough to turn it red. Actually, let's let's put that on the other angle. I'm going to see how, this, I'm going to see how that looks. Hello, blinds. There we go. Welcome back, everybody. Oh, did I move that up by chance? Oh, I moved the drinks. That's what happened. There we go. Hi, everybody. I want to bring you a little farther down so we can really get an idea of the color. Come on now. There we go. There we go. My goodness, I need to put on deodorant. I smell terrible. But you didn't hear that. Actually, you did. We're proud of our bodies around here. So I'm going to add, as best as I can... I guess I'll put this in the middle as my color control. I want to try to make I want to try to make these look as much like these bubble gummies over here, this bubble gum liqueur as best as I can. So I'm just going to kind of keep on stirring this guy and adding a bit more grenadine to it until it at least has a pink color. Whoops, I added way too much in there. Hello. Okay. Still not as red as I remember it to be. Also, this is a terrible glass to stir in because of the little dice that are in the drink glass itself. Here we go, more grenadine. More grenadine. Make it red. Make it pink. Do something to it, you know? Please me, I say, the bartender talking to his drinks. Talking to communing with the spirits, as they say. I'm communing with the spirits. The spirits say, drink me. The spirits also say, please get that spoon out of me. And which I will oblige, because I don't really think this is getting any... It's it's like a weird red color, and I feel like it's just going to... It's not even going to taste like bubblegum. It's just going to taste like grenadine. But I'll take a sip of it for now. But, um, tss, get it? It's still so vodka forward. It is so vodka forward, my goodness gracious. Which is to say, it tastes alcoholic. It's a little bit more bubblegummy than it was before. I'm getting something there that is a little more akin to bubblegum, and I think that the flavor of the banana combining with the cherry-ish flavor of the grenadine. In this case, the grenadine was made with pomegranate, so it's not quite cherry. It's cherry adjacent, but um... You know. Also, now that I think about it, 
I don't think I used homemade grenadine the last time I made the bubble gum. So it might be specifically needing those like roses or like master of mixes grenadine, not the kind of stuff that you make on your own, which might be the best reason I've ever come up with to use the stuff bought from the store as opposed to making some on your own. But again, alas, to each their own, whatever works best for you and your bar. Yeah, now it just tastes like grenadine. So we've we've gone we've gone over the top. So bubblegum number one, at least for me, it's definitely more bubblegummy now than it was previously. My initial impression is not as bubblegummy. If you're serving this with people, don't put your mouth all over the spoon. They might look at you weirdly. I mean, maybe do put your mouth all over it. Maybe that's just what the people are paying for. All right, I'm gonna add some red here to the green guy until it kind of matches the color that I'm hoping for. I don't know if it's gonna get red. The other one does have a pinkish color to it. I will say that. And I think it looks a little more pink from my angle. Like from my angle, this is looking a little Cosmo and Wanda right now. I'll take, I'll take pictures of those and um, they will be posted in the cocktail blog later on. For those of you who may be joining a little bit later, not only is the show here, I provide a little cocktail bar in our Discord server, a uh, cocktail blog in our Discord server. All of the recipes can be found there, as well as additional thoughts of kind of what, what was going on through my head that didn't wind up make, dribbling its way out of my mouth during the stream with themselves. They're also written like two to five days later because life is busy, you know? Yeah, this is still very green. Very, very green. Add more grenadine. More grenadine. And then we'll give it another taste and see if that's recovered this at all. Still very Cosmo and Wandy. That kind of looks like you dissolved matcha. It's like, like a, it looks kind of like a matcha milk latte. Let's see. Is that any more bubble gummy? No, it just tastes, it just tastes too much like amaretto. I don't, I don't really think that's very bubblegummy at all. Not for me, at least. Now, we'll get back to that in just a second. I was double checking a recipe that I had over here. So, alas, what we need to do is we need to compare both of these to the control. So that's what I'm going to do. I am done pouring grenadine down the hole that is bubblegum number one and bubblegum number two. So I wanted to finally see what this bubblegum liqueur tastes like because so far it has been sitting in the glass that it has for a couple days now because I think I started infusing this like a week or two ago and I took out the the, the bubblegummy mess um, from earlier. I took, I took it out because it gets like, it leaches all the color off of it and it's almost like, so when you put bubblegum inside of alcohol, in this case vodka, it's almost like the, the vodka chews the bubblegum. It comes out so taffy-like. It comes out so squishy and not super duper sticky. Although if you bubble up, blow bubbles with it, it will, it will get sticky. So, it smells like double bubble bubble gum. Not, not in the sense that it smells exactly like like bubble tape bubble gum or just bubble gum flavor. There's like there's a particular like dry candy store smell to double bubble bubble gum, and that's what it smells like because that's what it was infused with. And that is bubble gum on fire like it's so it's it's just vodka i'm gonna take, take one of the double bubble bubble gums and give it a chew yeah it's exactly what that tastes like again this should be no surprise i put bubble gum the bubble gum in my mouth into vodka and i put like a dozen of them in there so it just made sense it was very good both of them taste very good very good so far i'm gonna chew this enough to blow a bubble and then we have one more bubblegum combo. So, evidently, the bubblegum flavor that came to my mind from one or both of these bubblegum cocktail recipes from the Bartender's Black Book just doesn't cut it anymore. Maybe it might have tasted a little more like bubblegum then because I think I was using a different type of grenadine. It was the stuff that you get from the store as opposed to the stuff that I made uh, on my own. So that might be the missing link here. But... There's a combo that I found online, the one that I was saying earlier, like everyone's like, oh my god, we discovered this combination and it tastes like, it tastes like bubble gum. And I want to try that. So that's what I'm going to try. But first. Yeah. That was kind of shitty. That was kind of shitty. Bucket. There we go. Oh, that landed right on my squeezer. 
In any case, there's one more combo that must be addressed, and that is, according to the interwebs, banana plus Dr. Pepper makes bubblegum. So I'm gonna go over there for a second and grab a Dr. Thunder, because that's the closest thing we have in this house to Dr. Pepper. Unless we have a container of it, which I don't think we do. No, no, we don't. I said no. It's the last Dr. Thunder. And would you like it after I finish with it? No, I can't have more soda. Oh no, dude's can't have more soda. soda. And I had a soda, now she can't have the soda anymore. No more soda! No more soda, says my dearest, who's conveniently off camera. Hello. Why are the banana stickers on your wall? Because the Chiquita banana stickers came from the Chiquita bananas, of which I have at least a dozen and a half of them. No, stop taking them off! Please. Stop! No! What, what are you doing? I'm like a pretty... They're, this one's organic. I don't know. Apparently I bought... Oh, is that the difference? There's organic. Oh. The green ones are organic. I definitely paid the same price for all of these bananas. I accidentally stole from the corporation. Oh my god. It's okay. Oh, she's making a little star with me. Oh, you remember, things are precariously placed back here because there's not a lot of space. Well, while Anna makes a little Chiquita Christmas tree back there. No, it's not a Christmas tree. What is it? I don't know yet. It's a sun. It's beautiful looking. Look at the sun. Look at the sun. Would you sun? like the people yeah, to look sun. at the sun? No. I'm gonna make don't the people look at, look at the sun. I'm gonna make the people look at the sun. And the people look at the sun. Oh, look at the sun. Too many stickers. Where is it? Where is the sun? Where is the sun? Where is Son Goku? Bring me Son Goku. That's beautiful. Oh, That's my dearest it? Anna. You're putting stickers on the board. There we go. And that's beautiful. It's the sun. I like that. Goodbye. Bye bye. I miss you. This is the beautiful piece of artwork that we have created this evening. That's beautiful. I don't like that one sticker. That one sticker. Oh, okay. Go She's gonna move that. Oh, I just realized you can actually see that quite well. <laughs> nice. In any case. Oh. Dr. Thunder. Change order. Dr. Thunder Plus? Do you know do you know what we have to add to it? Uh Dr. Thunder and Plus? Bubblegum. No, banana. We're gonna make it taste like bubblegum. Where's the bubblegum? Uh bubblegum. Bubblegum vodka. Can I taste it? Absolutely. Do you wanna take from the cordial? Oh, that makes more sense. Yeah, yeah. Just so you don't get like your saliva inside of it, you know? Thoughts? I liked it. Good night. That'll do it. Oh, that's a really thick vodka. It's a very thick vodka, right? It's, it might also because there's like actual sugar dissolved in it, that might also add to the thickness. You gotta cut that. Get down with the thickness. And add more bubble gum. Okay. You would usually cut it with water, so that kind of makes sense. So cut it with water, and then I would say either, so the bubble gum amount okay. consistency is good, but I think you need more sugar, so it tastes more artificial. More artificial. More sugar. I like sugar. And I like sugar. I like sugar too. And this is King Sugar. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this Dr. Thunder and I'm gonna add some banana schnapps to it. We're gonna see if Dr. Th Dr. Thunder or Dr. Pepper plus banana schnapps actually make bubblegum. That makes a lot of sense, right? Of course it does. I need tiny glass. And it says it doesn't make sense. And it always puts me down. Like I love always. you! I know you do, but you always no. speak in the negative, dude. I'm very aggressive. It's extremely demoralizing. I'm only aggressive to you, though. But I love you. That does not make that any better. So, I know it doesn't. I'm just gonna kinda take equal parts of Dr. Thunder and banana schnapps. I found the green pen! And continue to drink. Why would you drink? Because that's what this show is all about! Happy? I am very happy over here. I'm having a great time. It's like the peel from Mario Kart! Okay, I'm not I. Hi there, and welcome to Mario Kart. <laughs> we're playing, we're don't drink and drive. Actually, this is not Mario Kart in the least bit. Please do not drink and drive. You can drink and drive in Mario No, 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 you cannot. No, no, do not drink. Nope, do not drink and drive. Never, nope, literally never do that. Nope, not even in a video game. Don't even do it. It's bad, it's bad. Very bad. Very, very bad. Gonna have a Mario Kart nope, definitely not, definitely not drinking and driving ever. Very, very bad thing to teach the, the young people of the world. Well, yeah. Wait, young people. You're not supposed to have young people in that street. Shh. There are no young people here. Just me. I'm 25 years young. Sir, what's your age? 20, you 25 to years there? young. Are you old enough for that section? Dr. Thunder and Banana Schnapps. It's kind of bubble gummy. Little, little bit. Little bit. Definitely feel like it needs an ice cube. It needs a bigger glass and ice cubes. So I'll put a bigger, bigger glass in there. 
this over here, over yonder, and we add an ice cube or two to it. Because I feel like it needs to be a little bit cooler. And I feel like it needs more Dr. Pepper, Dr. Thunder, or whatever you have to you happen to have. Whatever makes it work. And so now I'm gonna add more Dr. Thunder to it. I think it used to be about equal parts, and now it's more Dr. Thunder than it is banana schnapps. Yeah! It's a little bubblegummy. It's not the same type of bubblegum as the bubblegum vodka, but it's kind of close. It is actually kind of close. I'm down with that. That's not bad at all. It's definitely like... Less bubblegum than actual bubblegum, but it is most certainly reminiscent of it. And essentially what's happening there is you have these cherry flavors from the Dr. Thunder, the Dr. Pepper in this case, slightly different flavors, plus your bubble, uh, your banana there, and it's a little bubblegummy. Again, I say a little bubblegummy because compared to an actual piece of bubblegum, it does not taste like the actual piece of bubblegum, but it is kind of reminiscent of it. I feel like I definitely remember having, like... A bubblegum cocktail, a cocktail that actually tastes like bubblegum, and I'm actually a little disappointed that I didn't wind up getting the same thing from the recipes that I had here. I'm sure there's a million other combinations out there that would evoke that same bubblegummy flavor. And if there's any more that come our way, we'll explore them in another episode, because I think I've digressed about bubblegum banana combos for almost the last hour, and there's more cocktails to cover, so we will move on from that. And I'll put them over in the showcasement section and we'll put my bubblegum vodka away and it'll probably come back during a future stream because there's a candy cocktail stream eventually i'm i'm planning it i've got i'm curating recipes for it awesome well so where have we been so far on the world in the world of bananas because the theme of tonight is bananas we must continue talking about bananas what have we done with bananas so far well what we've done is we've created a classic cocktail known as the banana daiquiri essentially what that does is it takes some banana it daiquiris it makes it into some sort of puree or puts it into a blender and then combines that with other ingredients such as rum put a little lime juice in there just like you would for a regular daiquiri or a strawberry daiquiri excuse me <laughs> and you do other things accordingly. And we have drinks that come in either the liquid form or we have it in the, the frozen form. I personally like the frozen form a little bit better. It's beginning to separate, but it's still... It's still banana forward. It's still cold and it's still delicious. The banana daiquiri in the liquid form was a lot more spirit forward because it doesn't have all the dilution from the liquid crystals and stuff like that. Um, and I believe it had less banana in it so and we used a little bit of, bit of banana puree using a blender and we strained most of it anyway so what was left of the sugariness was coming from the banana and the demerara syrup that is present in both daiquiri forms and then what we did is we explored bubblegum bubblegum one bubblegum two dr pepper plus banana schnapps as well as just bubblegum infused vodka uh that was created using double bubble bubble gum and we saw whether or not we could actually evoke the feeling of bubblegum with banana it is a job that is best left to the flavors, best left to the flavor scientists, which I think we could definitely mix up if we did a bunch of exploration and stuff here, but it is totally beyond the scope of the bananas themed bar with an extreme. So where do we go with next with bananas? Well, there's a couple of things and I had to pull back up my recipe list because you know, I gotta look for that. There's a couple of, there are other ways to take your bananas out there, right? So one such thing that is banana-ish or banana-like are things called uh, like banana splits or banana sandwiches and stuff. And I think this one, the banana sandwich, is the, where we're gonna is where we're gonna go next. The banana sandwich, also from the Bartender's Black Book, which to be fair, both of those bubblegum recipes are having me a little a little sad right now. So I need something to pick me pick me back up. And to be fair, if there's anything that's going to pick a guy up, it's going to be a shot. So, the next thing that we're going to make is a banana sandwich, and it is a, sh a layered shot that includes, as a part of its recipe, coffee liqueur, banana liqueur, and a rum cream up on top. Now, the way that's what's going to happen here is you're going to create a little layering effect. The coffee liqueur is probably going to be brown and float to the bottom. The banana liqueur is most likely going to be kind of clearish and float in the middle. And then the cream liqueur, the rum cream, is gonna float up on top and I don't exactly know what color that'll be. 
I need to figure out exactly what kind of rum creams that I have. So we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of checking there. After I switch up the recipe a little bit and drop things on the floor, which is always a smart idea. So next up we have a layered shot called the banana sandwich. And when I think of a banana sandwich, what comes to mind immediately is either like a peanut butter banana sandwich, like the way that, you know, Elvis would do, or like I think of, I guess, just, just a banana sandwich, which I've never actually had before, which I imagine is just a banana with two slices of bread um, surrounding it. Either, either you cut up the banana first, or, it, <laughs> or I guess you don't, and you bite into the banana like corn on the cob, like I know some people to do. Banana. Sandwich. And in this case, the banana sandwich is a layered shot. The this layeredness in this case involves three ingredients. So I will go down and grab a couple of them. The first thing that we have is we're going to use a coffee liqueur. I love Mr. Black. And a friend of mine bought me this Mr. Black Coffee Amaro, and I really want to know what this tastes like combined with banana flavor and, I guess, other cream flavor, I suppose. I'm just very curious about it. The other thing I'm going to go to grab is, and this is technically a double coffee liqueur, but this is Mudslide Kahlua Rum and Coffee Liqueur. This is a cream liqueur. It is a rum cream coffee liqueur that you can combine with, according to the back, uh, ice, and that's it. Oh, you just add this plus ice and blend it, and you get a rich Kahlua flavor. Add more Kahlua for a richer Kahlua flavor. Thanks, Kahlua. Now I know how to make an entire pitcher of frozen mud style Kahlua. For more recipes, visit Kahlua.com. For more Kahlua in your Kahlua, then we add some Kahlua, and then blend it to really bring out more of the Kahlua notes. Anyway, it's rum cream. It's been in my collection for so long. I, d I, don't, I, I don't want it. I don't want it here. So I'm gonna put it into a shot. I'm gonna take it the best way that I know how to. One time I tried to make a mind eraser with it by adding some like like uh, acidic things to it and I didn't realize it was a rum cream. So I curdled it and then I clarified it and make it made a completely different cocktail and it was fine. It was pretty good, but I wasn't expecting this to curdle in my glass. So um, thank you Kahlua. Thank you so much for creating this. And we also need the banana liqueur, which of course in this case is gonna be the banana chops, the, the banana liqueur of the evening. Banana, banana, banana. That's, that's, that's bananas. Anyway, we need a shot. So I'm gonna really quickly go around the front of my bar into the, um, uh, the drawer that I have up in the front. Hi there, this is Cameron, he's in front of his bar. He's opening up a thing over here and grabbing, you guessed it, a shot glass. There you go. That one's for you, bartender. Oh, really? Yeah. You shouldn't have, thank you so much. We're gonna layer these on top of each other. Uh, I have this cool cocktail angle, and I don't remember whether I've done a layering with this cocktail angle before. So we're gonna see what happens. I'm gonna move these guys back here, and we're gonna try to make this work as best as we possibly can. Because it's all about producing a very good show, and hopefully not knocking over the things that I have specifically set up to be able to um, make the stream happen. I built a little thing. I built a little thing for the cocktail angle, and I am not a carpenter nor a nor a very good mechanical engineer so uh it it just works the way that it do hello hello shot glass hello shot glass let me bring you a little bit closer let me get a little more a little more up close and personal okay. yeah all right cool is that cool with you as if it's cool with you it's cool with me there we go what a beautiful little shot glass Look at this little guy. It's so cute. So now what we're going to do is we're going to absolutely defile it with alcohol, just as the Lord intended it. I'm going to grab myself the smallest bar spoon that I have, and we're going to add our ingredients as such. The bottom half, the bottom third of this is going to be our coffee liqueur. So the first thing you're going to do is I'm going to pour in a third of a part, or about a half an ounce, of my Mr. Black Coffee Amaro. Got a very nice dark hue to it, and it contrasts honestly pretty well with the light that is reflecting off of the bar rubber. Next, we're gonna add the banana liqueur. I actually think, no, I definitely don't need more Mr. Black in there. Now, when we're working with layers, it's all about the density. 
So what we have here is we're gonna have a higher proof spirit on top of the other one, so it should be lighter, and I believe it is going to separate properly so long as I'm not too aggressive with my pour here. What we try to do is pour on the back of the bar spoon slowly. Not into the not into the liqueur itself. Trying the bestest here. That kind of worked. A little bit, a little whoop. That's too much. All right. So that actually did work. So what we have is we have this dark layer down here. We have a lighter layer up on here, and that that top little part of the glass is going to hold most of the liquid anyways, because that's like the physics of geometry. So hopefully, if all goes according to plan, we'll be able to put our rum cream liqueur up on top of everything. This thing smells like, you guessed it, Kahlua. I wonder why. Of all possible things that it could be smelling like, gotta be Kahlua. There's not a lot in here, so. Might take me a hot minute. Very careful with my pores here. Oh, there it is, and it is doing a thing. It is doing a thing. Most certainly doing a thing. Welcome to Thing Town. Absolutely sunk all the way to the bottom. Incredible. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? We're gonna do another one. That didn't work. So, let's think about that for a second. Why didn't it work? I don't know why. The instructions as given say that we put coffee liqueur at the bottom, we put our rum cream up on top. Now I know that 99 bananas is 99 proof meaning it's got a lot of alcohol in it, which means intuitively it's going to be less dense because alcohol, I believe, is lighter than water than the other spirits that we add. So it's going to want to float to the top. It is higher proof than the Mr. Black, which I think comes in at around, it's 28.5%. Um, so it's like 50-something 50 50 something proof. So it's going to float on top of it. Cream has a funny way of floating on top of other things because of like it's it's like airiness, I believe. I again, I'm not a chemist or a physicist, so I could be wrong on this too. But intuitively, I would think that the cream might actually float up on top. But I don't think it would float up on top of the 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 banana really high proof liqueur. So we can kind of see here that it looks like the cream is going to be on the bottom, the coffee liqueur is going to be on top of that, and then the banana liqueur is going to go up on top. So I'm going to mix this that way instead. I'm gonna let the spirits do the talking, as opposed to the book, which is not wrong per se, just doing things differently. But we'll follow what the spirits say. So we'll get the rum cream out of the way first. Here we go. Put it out on the bottom. Looks pretty good. That has a nice, I, I will admit, it has a nice light brown hue to it, and I'm still not out of mudslide. If anybody wants mudslide Kahlua, please come over. Drink it. I don't want it. I really don't. And there goes some of my nice coffee tomorrow. <sighs> so sad. Guess I'm going to have to take a shot down with it. In any case, now we're going to add our Mr. Black coffee liqueur on top of it, which will probably, hopefully, float on top of the green. Lo and behold. Totally is... There we go. A nice, beautiful airing between the rum cream on the bottom, the coffee rum cream on the bottom, and whatever comes on top of it. I'll put that away. And now we add our 99 bananas up on top. Again, I've got 99 bananas, but apparently a Gros Michel is not one of them because the Gros Michel are gone. AKA Big Mike. RIP. RIP Big Mike. In any case, and we float that on top. The high proof spirit. Here we go. This is a banana sandwich in a layered shot form. Got a nice, pretty color to it. A nice layering action. I appreciate that. How does that look from my angle? That's not too bad, all things considered. Look at that. I'm trying to get a nice picture of it, but it just doesn't want to focus. My camera has been very, very, very against me. In any case, that's just how it be. Oh, thank you, Eddie, for taking that photo. I'm glad that I'm not the only person who appreciates the beauty of layered shots around here. For anybody who's curious about the pictures, feel free to go for them. You know, if you like that, I, I don't know. I 
When I got into cocktail mixology, the first thing that spoke out to me was not the way that the cocktails look. So the whole cocktail photography thing totally came second, if not third to this whole mixology thing. But nowadays, now that I know what the mixology is all about, when I see a nice looking cocktail, I'm like, ooh. I don't know how to make one of those. Let me grab that picture. I put it in my recipe book. So if you want to add these onto your own recipe book, feel free to do so. Distribute them as you please. Half of them aren't even mine anyway. We pulled them from the internet because we're all explorers in this world. In any case, this was our banana sandwich. Our banana sandwich, which is, according to the book, supposed to be some coffee on the bottom, banana in the middle, and your rum cream up on top, which kind of makes sense, right? It it evokes the idea of the banana sandwich. The banana is sandwiched between the other ones. Now, apparently, we're more of an open-faced sandwich type of person, you know? What we do is we take the coffee, the, the bread in this case, I, I guess the, the rum cream, we put the bread on the bottom, we put some coffee up on top, and we put some banana on top of there. What I'm imagining in place of the coffee is like a chocolate syrup or something. So it's bread. The way we do our open-faced banana sandwiches is bread, chocolate syrup, banana, as opposed to bread, banana, no. The other way would have been chocolate syrup with banana on top of it and bread. We just flipped it. That's funny. Nice potato, bud. In any case, that's a banana sandwich. Uh, how does it, I mean, one, one definitely looks a lot better than the other one. So uh, photos of that, y'all gotta check it out. It smells like banana because it's got banana floating on top of it. I'm not gonna take the one because I don't feel like absolutely hating myself this evening. So I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna feed that to the bucket. It is an honor for the bucket. Every time we give something to the bucket, it is an honor to the bucket. So uh, nothing ever goes to waste because we put it in the bucket. Um, although it does wind up going down the drain eventually. I'm trying to find better ways to reuse all the stuff that we have here. And if anybody has ideas, please feel free to share them. We are all learning here together. The banana sandwich, the way Elvis would have intended it. I don't really know. It doesn't have any peanut butter in it. Ooh. Ooh, that's spicy. So the first thing I get in is I can taste that coffee in there. The coffee flavor coming from not only the mudslide, but also from the Mr. Black Coffee Amaro. I love this Amaro very, very much. I am a big fan of the Negroni cocktail and will often mix for myself a coffee Negroni, which subs out uh, one ingredient for coffee liqueur instead. I think I've subbed out either, I, I've done it a couple different ways. I've subbed out the gin for coffee liqueur, but I've also subbed out the Campari for the coffee liqueur. In this case, it's the, the Coffee Amaro which kind of makes sense when you have it like a negroni you want to have a little bit of a bittering component there which is usually the campari but if you swap it out with some other amaro out there like a nonino a montenegro you put some other amaro like a mr black makes things very very tasty on one occasion somebody tempted me with an espresso negroni where they actually took the campari and infused it, infused it with espresso beans but apparently they had forgotten to put the beans in the campari and i was a little disappointed but i didn't have to pay for that drink so that was rather pleasant but this is good i like how the the coffee cream provides a texture that really carries the rest of the shot with it. So I'm getting the coffee note in there, a slight, I don't want to call it citrus because I know that the coffee Amaro is like an ew with like a citrus flavor, but I don't want to call it orangey. It's really, although it is kind of a little orangey. I actually just got, I just got this association in mind of like those, those chocolate oranges and that thought came to mind and then I tasted it. So I think there is a bit of an orangey component there, more like an orange zest as opposed to like an orange juice, if you will. But the, the texture of the, the, what was it? The coffee cream rides on top of that. And then you have like that slight banana note that most of the banana is actually kind of lost on me to be perfectly honest there. It's taking a back seat to everything else. Although combined with those more textury notes that I'm getting from the rum coffee, there's a word there. I forgot what the word was. Cream. There's banana like interlaced with it. If that makes any sense at all. Again, I took the shot all at once. I could taste it again, but I'd have to make another one. And that's just, whew, that's a lot. Cheers to that, y'all. Absolutely. I need to put a hot bit of water on me because I can, I can feel it. I can feel it. Let's see. Excuse me. So we're at like the what two two ish two ish and ten mark now two ish and fifteen ish two and a quarter or whatever. 
Where else do we want to take things from here? To be fair, all things considered, we haven't done too, too much banana. There have been, there are a lot of bananas on this bar over here, and I feel like it would be disingenuous to call it a banana stream if we didn't use more banana. So let me go through my prepared recipes and see what else we have there that actually uses bananas. Wow, this is so interesting. I don't have anything else that actually uses bananas. <laughs> oh my god. I'm trying to think of the other stuff here. I guess most of that winds up coming with the banana puree, which usually goes into the daiquiri. I realized that one of the recipes that I curated for this stream was called the Drunken Monkey, and it contains absolutely no banana at all. I marked it as bananas, but it has no bananas. It's got pineapple, coconut, rum, bitters, nutmeg, cherry, lime. And I prepared for it, but did not realize that there was any bananas in it, so I marked that incorrectly. That'll have to arrive at a different bar stream. Huh. I totally did that wrong. But what else do I have planned for the evening? I have a banana split, which has some banana liqueur, and then I've got a banana spice rum martini. Just kidding. I'm not going to let you choose. I'm going to do it. It's the banana spice rum martini, because I've made that before, and it's so good. So that's what we're going to do next. Banana spice from martini. I don't have to erase sand, uh, banana. I do have to erase sandwich, as I ate the sandwich. It was a rather tasty sandwich, all. Alrighty, so. <laughs> banana spiced rum martini. That's a lot to unpack there. Luckily for you, I plan on making an ingredient by ingredient, because that's the only way I can. Banana, spice, rum, Nice. So think about it for a moment. Consider, consider the humble banana, or the humble bushel of bananas, and look upon it. What does the banana evoke to you? Reminds me of the crescent moon. Reminds me of a smile upon my face. It reminds me of... Mario Kart, honestly, because you throw the banana peels behind you, but alas, we're drinking here, so we're not actually driving cars. That's a terrible, terrible idea. Never do that. However, another thing that it reminds me of is, is like, is like spice, I guess? I don't really know where I'm going with this. It doesn't really remind me of spice, but when I think of a banana spice rum martini, I feel like what I would put in there is something banana-y, something spiced rum, like spice rum itself, and something martini-like, so maybe a little bit of vodka. Well, lucky for us, the great wonders of IP over at Disney World have decided to create a banana spiced rum martini and tell us exactly how to make it, according to one of their beautiful, delicious Disney Sweet Treats books. Go Disney! Anna loves Disney. My dearest absolutely adores Disney. So she got this book and was like, there's alcohol in this! And I was like, absolutely. So what is in? What is in the banana spiced rum martini? I'm so glad you asked. Spiced rum banana liqueur and horchata cream liqueur didn't see that one coming there's absolutely no part of this feels martini like there's no gin in there there's no vermouth in there there's not even any vodka in there we put some cream liqueur horchata just like a cinnamon cream it's delicious it's absolutely delicious and i love this cocktail they're using the more colloquial term of martini, as in, it is just a popular drink. It's a popular drink because Disney made it, so thanks, Mouse. We appreciate that around here, I guess. Iger and Chapek and all you peoples out there. But to create a banana spice from martini, all you really gotta do is combine these things together, and I think you have to shake them. I closed the book way too soon. You have to shake it, right? Combine ingredients in an ice-filled shaker, shake well, and straight into a martini glass. And that's, that's just how you do it. Back when I made this cocktail originally, I had no martini glasses. So uh, now we do have martini glasses, and that's pretty cool. So I think what I'll, what I'll say here is in, in preparation for this is the last cocktail that I have planned for this evening, but I kind of want to do something else with bananas. And I, I don't quite have anything prepared for that. So if anybody out there has an idea for something else that we want to see banana mixed with, we'll, we'll make something else up here new. We'll look something else up. I want to explore a little bit more because I'm not quite satisfied with everything that we've gotten so far this evening. So I open it up to the crowd as we go through this next cocktail here. You shake it more than twice. You're playing with it. If I shake it more than twice, I'm playing with it. I love to play with my drinks and my food around here. So I might just shake it more than twice. 
Maybe. Banana spice from martini. We need horchata clean cream liqueur, which I happen to have over here. It is not quite horchata specifically. To my knowledge of what horchata is, which is H O R C H A T A, is a is a is a cinnamon cream type liqueur. This is a chila horchata cinnamon cream liqueur. Oh, it actually says horchata on it. Sweet. Love to do the cooking by the book. And it says on the back, a unique blend of rum, real dairy cream, and a sprinkle of exotic cinnamon. Take all of your favorite drinks to a new sublime level. Mix and match chila horchata with any of these items. Cinnamon schnapps, spiced rum, vanilla vodka, or coffee. We are providing spiced rum in this case, which totally fits there. So we're going to add some spiced rum. I feel like... I've never actually brought out spiced rum on the stream before, but I do have a bottle of Captain Morgan that I may or may not have stolen from a fraternity. Maybe, who knows? The, the details of this drink and the morality surrounding it are beyond me. I'm of legal drinking age, so that's really all you need to know. Brad says, gotta do the cooking by the book. It's what makes things tasty, dude. You know you can't be lazy. I don't know, the so I don't know that song very well. What else do we need? Banana liqueur. You could probably use a creme de banana. I have banana schnapps. Flavor frenzy in every every shot. Banana blast. That's what the 99 proof banana says. Oh, there's actually recipes on the back of this. Banana and chocolate. Banana, coconut, and pineapple. And banana and cinnamon. Banana and cinnamon actually sound great. That's a banana bombshell. Unless anybody else have any other ideas, we're going to do a banana bombshell after this just because that's what the back of the bottle says. It's great, and we're going to garnish it with... A banana or something. I don't really know. So, to make this, we're going to take a shaking apparatus, which I have absolutely none that are clean. So, I'm going to clean one of my shaking apparatus, because it's dirty. And uh, I am planning on getting more, because uh, after what? It's been since the beginning of the year, or since, since I moved into this new apartment, which is when the show took on its most current form, we've been making more than just a single cocktail every single stream. And to be fair, I've just been working with what I've got and realizing that it puts a little bit of a strain on the show itself. So, a man who always wants to improve once said, that's me, um, ah. That's what the man who always wants to improve. That's what he says. He says, ah, in just exactly fashion. The Banana Boulevardier on the Difference website looks interesting. You know what's really funny? Rich, I'm really glad that you brought that up. Because I just remembered last night, and I'm not even joking here, while I was drawing bananas on the board, I made myself what I'm calling a banana Negroni. It is exactly the way you'd make a regular Negroni. One ounce each of your gin, your Campari and your Sweet Vermouth, and I just added an extra ounce of banana schnapps in there. It hit me so hard that I had trouble sleeping last night because it just it just like came out of nowhere. So a banana boulevardier also sounds awesome. We'll do that one. I like that one idea. Keep those ideas coming. We'll, we'll choose one of them. We'll choose one of them. So we need our glasses, a little bit of ice. The other idea, Rich. I love where your mind's at. I love that. So we're gonna add a big old big old ice cube. I get from here into the big cocktail glass. We're gonna add two small ice cubes. Two and three. And we'll prepare our other ingredients as such. They are all in equal parts. Yes, they are. Are they all a single ounce? Yes, they are. Each of the cream liqueur, we'll do the speed style. Where's my, where is my measuring majigger? It's dirty. Feed the bucket. Not anymore, it's not. First we're gonna do. Orchata cream liqueur, which you may notice has a plastic bag over it because th the cap broke. So I want to preserve the orchata because it tastes so good. A single ounce or about 30 milliliters, or you can just mix this in equal parts. It really doesn't matter. One of your orchata cream liqueur, which... God, that's so good. It smells so nice. It is like... You ever had that, like, Coffee Mate French Vanilla Coffee Creamer? But you didn't put any coffee in it, you just drank it straight from the bottle because you weren't old enough to appreciate coffee yet at your parents' house? Yeah. That's what that is. 
and it smells like nostalgia. I wonder why. In any case, now we add in a single ounce of our banana liqueur. It could be a uh, creme de banana. Uh, Giffords is a always a valid recommendation, although I've never actually had it before. So the recommendation comes from the internet. So take that as it will. And we're gonna add some spiced rum as well. Also a single ounce, all equal parts is the first one. You could very well mix this in equal parts using an entire gallon of each ingredient. I don't know how you're surviving. You're probably doing it in pieces or you're sharing with friends. Drinking on a show behind the bar is fun, but have you ever considered genuine human connection? Put that into your cup and sip on it carefully. Now we're going to combine our solids to our liquids. I did not give this enough time to come up to temperature, but that's fine. I don't really care. I just realized I'm a little buzzed over here and just slightly unhinged. These bananas are making me go. Bananas. I love just live streaming. Put this shit in there. Okay, cool. This shit is bananas. That's what I'm saying. I need a martini glass. Oh, where's my martini glass? Oh, it's hidden behind the other saucer I have. Great. Now, before I unleash this cocktail from the shaker, what I would like to do is explore one of the other garnishes that I had planned for this evening. So I'm gonna clean up the bar a little bit. Put that in the bucket. Yes. No, I care about it. Don't talk back to yourself, Cameron. Shut up. I don't do this. Usually. Most of the times I only have myself to talk to up here, so. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. What's that spell? Insanity, I guess? I don't know. Depends on the context, I suppose. What bottle are you drinking from? So, one of the other cocktail garnishes that I wanted to give a try was this really, really cool dolphin-looking thing. And when I say dolphin looking thing, you might ask yourself like, what is this guy on? What is this guy smoking? It's alcohol, I promise. Uh, and I'm gonna try this and see, see if that even works. So this is what we're gonna try. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a couple of things off to the side. I'll bring the cocktail angle back up over here and we're gonna make it make a little garnish or at least we're going to try to. And if we fail, at least we fail together. Here we go. So I'll put put this down here i will bring out my cutting board how does that look that is way too close please back it up a bit thank you there we go a little bit there oh you can see my phone who's texting me today nobody because all my loved ones are asleep it's like 10 30. jk so we're gonna take a banana oh i'll take from the bananas that i have over on my it was over on my bartending table over here, and I'm gonna put it there, all lightly. Beautiful banana, caress the banana. Not too much though, don't go crazy. So what we wanna do is, I, this one looks like, this is, this is what the picture looks like. I printed it off the internet and I found it on Google. That's what it looks like. It looks like a little flipper right there. So what we're gonna need is we're going to need, you guessed it, a banana. We're going to need something for that banana to play with. I mean, the dolphin, like a maraschino cherry. And we're going to need some clothes because the banana needs to see. The dolphin needs to experience the world. I'm going to go grab some clothes. I know I have whole clothing here somewhere. And as I drop things on the floor, I'm sure you'll forgive me. That's creeper berry. Don't know why I have that. Oh, all spice. Where is my clothes? Is my clothes seriously not up here? That is very shocking. Oh my, wait, I found a clove, it's over there. This is my clove. This is my clove, her name is Tanya, but Tanya is somewhere in there. I don't know where she is. We also need a maraschino, so that's what I was going to Alrighty, we got some maraschino cherries over here. Did you know bananas emit 0.1 microsieverts of radiation? I did not, weird number. But I feel like I'm better off knowing that now, so I guess I really shouldn't eat too many bananas. And so too shall you after banana. It's bananas, dude. So what we'll do is, as such, we are going to take the nosed part of our banana and separate it from the tail. This piece of the banana, 
will go on the table with the other half-eaten banana, which I definitely did not, I definitely remembered until now. Next, what we have to do is we have to give a little banana. We got to give it a little bit of a nose. You see the little bottle nose thing here? It's got to, it's got to hold something. So evidently, actually, maybe we should do the cloves first. Let's do the eyes first. We'll do the eyes first. Again, never done this before. Saw it on the internet, trying to replicate it in real life uh, for your enjoyment. Although technically speaking, right now I'm the one on the internet. And I'm the one interneting you, so... <sighs> actually, I want, to do the, I want to do the nose first, because I might actually cut into this thing's eyes, and that would be embarrassing. So what we want to do is we want to take a piece of this, and we just want to cut along it. Or at least this is my interpretation. There we go. Little, little nosed dolphin. Look at that. Give him a kiss, dude. Mwah. Beautiful. When you internet the world, the world internets you back. Dude, don't get philosophical on me. So now, evidently, this thing is going to be capable of absolutely gorging a maraschino cherry. So with that, we should allow it the miracle of sight. So we're going to take little cloves, these little guys, and put them in conveniently placed locations to make them look like eyes. These things are sharp, so it's not that difficult. Hello, you. Nightmare fuel. Hello, you. Hello, world. That's a programming joke. Look at this beautiful... Weird number. Am I playing with my food yet? So now what we're going to do is we're going to get a cherry. I'm just going to... I'm chaotic, so I'm just going to reach my finger in and go for it. There we go. And then I'm going to lick my fingers clean. All right. All right. Your food is playing with me. Huh. And now what we'll do is we'll have... <laughs> We're going to have our little guy... Nom, 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 nom. I'm going to give this a little bite. Is that working? Holy shit, it worked. Wow. Is. Do I know where your Nutella is? Yeah. I do not know where your Nutella is. World, where is the Nutella? Brad, weird number. Where, where is, where is the Nutella? Did you bring it up here? No, I was checking your stuff. Look at this beautiful little dolphin. It's beautiful. Yeah, look at this dolphin. Check this dolphin out. What the hell are you doing to the bananas? I made a dolphin. I mean, it does look like one, but what? What is that? It's SeaWorld. It's clove. That is it's it's SeaWorld. It's it's all it's the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Oh my god, I need sugar. Anna needs sugar and she needs her Nutella. <laughs> oh dang, major stream delay. That's on me, dog. Sorry about that. This is how Chernobyl started. And this is how the camera with the next stream is going to end. In a fiery nuclear explosion. You're not gonna eat Beautiful. Bananas? I don't want those bananas. Those are reserved for a different stream. Interrupting my flow, dude. Anyway, we're gonna go back to the other angle. I've had. Oh wait, wait! I have to actually pour my cocktail. Wait a minute. Hold up. Wait, wait, wait! wait. What are you doing? No, it's a do. What do you want? Why are you breaking things? No. My 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 beach ball fell out. No. It's a what did you do? It's a now the dolphin can't have fun anymore. Well, actually, apparently it can have just as much fun as it did before. This is getting very chaotic right now. Hey, look, actually, it stand on, stands on its own. That's beautiful. I have to take a photo of that. I have to take a photo of that. It is so freaking cute. We were making a cocktail, weren't we? I don't know. Yes. I didn't come up here for that. Anna, how are you still awake? I'm trying to find the Nutella. I need to make my lunch for tomorrow. We love ourselves. A determined person. Sleep. Yep. We love a determined individual. I love her so much. I'm getting married to this girl in, like, less than a year. God, I love my life so much. And you can love it, too. Are you bad-mouthing me? No! I'm actually good-mouthing you! Oh, oh my goodness gracious. Anyway. That's my dearest lovely. Her name's Anna. Disney Queen. She pops up every once in a while. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little flipper here inside of our glass and then we're gonna pour the martini on top of it if this works it is going to be the cutest thing like ever oh my god 
bucket, strainer, strain that. Here we go. Actual cocktail. Actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf. so cute that is so cute ah, <laughs> i love it that is so cool i freaking love that so much oh my goodness that is so great i gotta take a picture of that that is the cutest freaking thing i found this on the internet like three hours ago that's so cool anyways i digress i'm gonna stop stroking my ego for a second Back to the show. Whew. So I have a martini here, evidently. And uh, that martini has spiced rum, horchata liqueur, and banana liqueur. So, oh great. Oh my god, Foda, P-H-O-T-A. People hurting over the air. Oh, that's very sad. Close there, Amy Chow. Close, but no cigar. I feel like, I feel like the chat commands need like autocorrect. Like, even if you do FOTA, it should still work, you know? We can add that. We can add that. Yo, work that body. Do some shoulder squeezes. I could really use... Alright, totally digressing from it. This is how you do a shoulder squeeze. Is take your shoulders, squeeze them. I really hope I do. Oh my god, I can hear my dearest voice from downstairs. Oh my god, she's gonna come up here. Maybe. Take your shoulders. Pull them up here. Oh my goodness. Meow meow blue. Blue is my favorite color. Did you know that? Plaid is also my favorite color. If I hadn't said that already. Plaid's not technically a color. Plaid is a pattern. I digress. Oh my god, she's coming up. Look, am I doing these correctly? I'm so proud! Oh my god, I'm doing it correctly! Better focus at the lower side. Can you imagine being put on the spot on the internet in front of however many viewers of the internet and an infinite amount of people over the course of your lifetime as well as the person most important to you? Okay. Hi there. You're trying to... Yeah, good. I'm just checking the engagement. Absolutely incredible. Well, yeah, because you're looking for the mid-trap. Yep. So you're mid-trapezius. For sure. So instead of trying to raise them up... Like I can tell you about ones and zeros. That's that's about all I'm able to educate people on. I can educate people on their bodies! Did you know that the logical operation of and only is only true when both inputs are true, or if all of the inputs are true? This bowl keeps confusing me. I don't know why things are confusing you, dearest. <laughs> Want a cocktail? No, I still can't find the Nutella! That's okay. Cocktails are all I'm really good for on this platform. My favorite color is clear. That is awesome. Like, trans like transparency. That's a good one. I know. Somebody definitely answered that. Like, I feel like I'm getting a flashback to elementary school now where somebody was like, my favorite color is clear. And the teacher was like, no, smartass, pick a color. I, I agree. Like sparkle. I agree. Anna's favorite color is sparkle. My favorite color is clear. Well, excuse me, plaid. I'm projecting here. Your favorite color is clear. clear. No, clear, silly. Although we're a little queer around here. It just happens. So now that that... Very stressful test was over of my physicality. The banana spiced rum martini, which now has a little flipper sticking out of it because why the hell not? Because cocktails are fun and easy. Tastes something like... Smells something like banana. It's very, it's very, very banana forward. Everyone, what do I have with peanut butter? What do you want with peanut butter, dear? Well, I can't find the Nutella. It kind of tastes like banana. Peanut butter. Yeah. I have a bunch of bananas up here. I, I, yeah, dude. Okay. It's time to make lunch for my dearest. So, I have this really dirty cutting board. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel a banana for my dearest. We're going to cut up a banana for her. In the meantime, I'm also going to talk about the drink that we just made. The, what was it called again? Banana Spiced Rum Martini. Uh, credits to Mickey Mouse himself, or Walt Disney, or whoever's currently the marketing chair, or the hospitality guy, or girl, or non-binary individual. I don't really know, and to be honest, I don't think I care. However, it is so good. Oh my God. So this thing, banana peel for the bucket, loves the bucket, bucket loves it. This 
it's it's cinnamon. It's cinnamon. It's banana. Which, to be perfectly honest, is not necessarily that a com uh, not necessarily a combo that I instantly think of when I think of banana, but it is very very tasty. Oh, a piece of that fell. It's okay. I need bananas. Hold on, I'm not done with it yet. I don't need one, Danny. I'm cutting up a whole banana for you. Okay, cool. I've cut up an entire banana. This oh. is my lunch. Making lunch for my dearest. We oh. got banana. Are you gonna hide the hidden banana. Mickey in there? Banana. There's a hidden Mickey. No, banana. You can't have them on top of banana. each other. Banana. Why are you criticizing the food that I make? I don't want to. Did I ask for your There's opinion? A lot. I didn't think I asked for your opinion. This is my lunch. Anna. Why are you I, double stacking? Hold on, hold on. May I? May I ask for your opinion? Yeah, sure. Okay. okay. No, 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 no. That's enough. Oh, that's it. Okay, that's well. There's oh. my banana. Oh, this is gonna be good tomorrow. Now we have more banana. <laughs> you don't get the rest of the banana. I must look I get the really spider egg end. You get the what? The spider egg Ew, end. Ew, what the hell? It's okay. It's just a weird inside joke that I. Okay. Thank I had you. banana on me. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, have another. I didn't mean that really. No, 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 no. I do not consent to that. No, thank you. Okay. Okay. Consent is important. I'm walking away now. Consent is key. Oh shit. I didn't finish packing my bag. Incredible. Look at going through and making people do shoulder squeezes. Oh my god, look at all this stuff going on here. What was I doing? We're making cocktails, right? I, I, I'll admit, I have a very hard time context switching, and I usually don't get off, caught off guard during these streams. I think he's taking you off topic! Anna is threatening me from downstairs, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. I love her very much. The banana spice rum martini is really tasty. Honestly, it might just because I am. That's wonderful. It was in the fridge. That's incredible. Do I Harry made a banana sandwich? Oh my god! God, I love this woman so much. Ooh. You're welcome. Yes. You're wait. Thank you. Yeah. Oh my goodness, what is that? Work that body again? Oh my god! Consumption! Oh, it's consumption! Oh, thank goodness, please. Let's get the show rolling. <laughs> yeah, dude! I love that. She found it. Stop wasting all your PPP ages, Andrew. Yeah, come on, Andrew! Actually, no, wait, wait, continue. Please, please continue, Andrew. This cocktail is really good. The banana spice rum martini. I got it, seriously, hats off, ears off to Disney over there. It tastes really, really good. There is a note of cream there. There is a, the, hand flicks, here we go. Hand flicks, always, as we, this is actually not as bad as it seems. Hand flicks. We do hand flicks. So, the banana spice rum martini is really, really good. It is that flavor of cinnamon. It's cinnamon cream. Like, I'm trying to think of something else out there that is like cinnamon cream-like as a comparison, but I can't really think of anything right now. What else in my life is cinnamon? Almost like a cinnamon, like, swirl bagel. Although it's not as, it's not as like, seed-y or wheat-y. Oh my God, it's like a banana cream pie. Yep, no, no, I figured it out. It is like a banana cream pie. Like, if you've ever had a banana cream pie, and it's got like that cinnamon like graham cracker crust, that's it. That's, that's what this is in a glass. And it also has a dolphin sticking out of it. And I don't think that there is any other way that I can describe that cocktail. It is delicious. It is desserty. It is something that apparently I've made twice now on stream and I'm still happy with. Good. And I didn't even make it correctly the first time. I think the first time I made it with some falernum and pineapple coconut rum and it was just not it's just not gosh i've done all the hand flicks that i can this has been exciting man what an exciting segment that this whole thing has been this is delicious oh my goodness gracious that's so good i would highly recommend a 
banana spice rum martini. Disney apparently did it very well. It's all equal parts. You make it with horchata cream liqueur, or like you could probably also get away with using any other cream liqueur and just adding a little bit of cinnamon schnapps to it, probably. Um, yeah, and you just take it from there. And you add spice rum, and you add banana liqueur. I almost forgot the two other ingredients. They're all in equal parts. It's very simple. Shake that thing up, put it in a martini glass, garnish it however you want to. In our case, we used Flipper. And Flipper, fun time is over. Well, that was incredibly chaotic. I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup. I did say I wanted to do one more cocktail. So we're gonna do that Banana Boulevardier that Rich was talking about. Flipper becomes flapper, get it? No, 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 this is not a flap. This is good, this is a good one. A very, very good one. Unless we're talking about flops as in like floating point operations a second from a computing standards, nobody wants to talk about that. I'm an electrical and computer engineer. I, I'm the only one who wants to talk about that. Absolutely. Yes, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love that. Oh my god. Oh, welcome back, dears. What's up? I have to put a powder in my bag because I want to tomorrow. You're going to tomorrow. Oh, Aqua Buddies is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Nice. Very cool. Fun times for the kiddos. Mm -hmm. Fun times indeed. Whoops. I packed my PJs, so I can get paint out. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. So, actually, I got to look this one up. It was the, it was like a, ooh, it was like a Banana Boulevardier from Difford's Guide. Banana. Boulevardier. Banana Boulevardier. Punch drink. Difference. Difference. We love Difference Guide around here. I'm going to. I have the really awesome ability using an app called Recipe Keeper to literally take any recipe from a website, insert it into the app, and we've got it. We've got it. The bu Banana Boulevardier. We're going to tag that as the banana stream. Are you going to sleep? Good night, my lovely. I couldn't understand a word you said. Bye bye. I love you. <laughs> That's what she says. She loves me too. Yes, she do. So the banana. Oh, I should switch the cocktail recipe. Banana Boulevardier. For those of you who may be uninitiated, or uninitiated, or just kind of new to this whole thing, the Boulevardier is a riff on a Negroni, which in and of itself is a riff on the Americano. So I'm going to meet you halfway and tell you what a Negroni is, which is equal parts or some other combination that's whatever you want it to be of gin, sweet vermouth, and Campari. Campari being a bitter orange liqueur. A Boulevardier is kind of like a Negroni. I don't remember how to spell Boulevardier. Now I do. It's kind of like a Boulevardier, except it is made with whiskey instead of gin. I was doing so well there for a moment. Bulle Vardier. I don't know what I was doing with my capitals and otherwise there. That is incredible. Totally not related to bananas, but I just ran across this cocktails for programmers on GitHub. Might be a fun theme one night. I'm also a developer. Interested to see how this banana boulevardier turns out. Oh my god, that's so cool. Rich, I don't know. I'm gonna take a picture of this. But if you're not in the Discord, if anybody's, whoever's in the Discord, please post that in on topic. I am incredibly interested in that. Eventually, I'm just going to turn all my drinking decisions over to ChatGPT, says more than awesome. Dude, I do take some inspiration from ChatGPT. I, I, love, I love AI. I love talking about tech. If this is of interest to literally anybody, I will talk your ear up for three to four hours about recent technological advances that I find on Twitter. I will. And it is incredibly great. Join the party. Yeah, do that. Now. Or don't. You can just pass on. If you're just passing on through and you're just a lurker and stuff, I appreciate you. Have a wonderful rest of your night. Don't feel any pressure to stick around. I'm just honored that I was able to be a part of it. Except with the rest of us. In any case, the next cocktail that we're making is a Banana Boulevardier. And by the power of the glory of the internet, I have already categorized it in my recipe book. Easy. There we go. And it's from Difford's Guide. Recommended. Actually, specifically re recommended by Rich. I should. That's um. That's a good one. No, indeed. And it is made by combining whiskey, vermouth, Campari, and creme de banana. Now, unfortunately, I do not have any creme de banana over here. However, I do have some banana schnapps. And that's just going to be a good stand in here. So, the difference between, for a while, I didn't realize that there was much of a difference between, let's say, a certain spirit as a schnapp 
versus as a creme, or even the difference between, let's say, a white creme de menthe or a green creme de menthe, or a dark creme de caco versus a white creme de caco. I was under the impression they were just kind of all different colors and different, like, flavors of the same thing, in the sense that cachaca, which is made from cane sugar, is different than rum, which is made from a different part of the distillation process. I am not an expert on this, so I'm not even going to bother going down that road, but they are both from cane sugar. They are different spirits because of the, pro the process is different. I would imagine, and please don't quote me on this, that creme de banana is different than banana schnapps probably because of the process. The difference between like a dark and white creme de caco is apparently in the flavor, between like a yellow and green certrousse or a, a green and white creme de menthe. Apparently, it's not just the color, it's other components of it as well. I will eventually explore those things because I think that is a very interesting topic, but it is beyond the scope of tonight's stream. Stick around and drop a follow if you're interested in seeing that kind of stuff, I guess, but really no pressure to do so. The Banana Boulevardier calls for those ingredients, your vermouth, your whiskey, your Campari, and creme de menthe. You're going to stir everything over ice like you would do a regular Boulevardier or a Negroni, and you will pour that into a glass and strain it all out. So that's what we're going to do, and that will be our final cocktail for the evening because I love me a Negroni, and I think this is an excellent way to end on it. That's kind of a variation on Negroni. So what we're gonna need is a stirring apparatus, which we happen to, ha happen to have conveniently placed off camera. We're gonna need a large ice cube, one that is able to take on the full power of our stirring apparatus. Did I call it a shaking apparatus? Because if I did, that's wrong. This is an apparatus that you stir. Put that back in my freezer because I do have a freezer over here. And we're gonna combine the ingredients as follows. This is based off of a 30 milliliter base, which is a one ounce base, or just about that. So we'll measure in ounces. I have a very dirty measuring apparatus. So I'm gonna do that a little, a little bit of a thing there. So what we're gonna add first to our glass, or mixing glass in this case, is 30 milliliters of whiskey. There are many different whiskeys to choose from. And so what I found is I personally like my Boulevardiers with a smooth whiskey that doesn't have a super corny or potent taste to it. I've tried it with a rye before. It's a little intense. I've tried it with, uh, like the only one that I can think of is a Larceny Small Batch, which is incredibly potent for its corn flavor. I'm gonna go with a Jameson. It's an Irish whiskey. I find that it's very, very smooth. And if I were to make my own Boulevardier, I would probably go with the Jameson. So that's what I'm gonna go with. Although, depending on what you like in your own whiskeys, in your own bourbons, in your own Boulevardiers, you could probably sub in with literally anything here. Just make it the way that you know. And if you don't know, then you just go with something simple. It could be any bourbon off the shelf. I think a good, good intros, if I had to give my own personal suggestion is, I like Jameson. I think Jameson is very good. It's an Irish whiskey. It's triple distilled, smooth Irish whiskey. It, I, I suffer from acid reflux, and I find that Jameson goes down smoothly and it does not activate my reflux, which would otherwise be unpleasant for me. So that's my recommendation for the other refluxers out there if there are any to be found. If you're into something that's a little more flavor forward, you could go with something like a rye whiskey, which usually has what they call like a rye spice to it. It's kind of like a punch. It's almost spicy, spicy like cinnamon spice. Almost kind of like a pepper spice. Spice is a little, it's a, it's a way that people describe it. And I understand that having tried some rye whiskeys. Or you can go something with something like really, really simple. And um, what a simple whiskey is, I don't really know. Good choice, thank you. I think, Brad says, for a pretty much any whiskey-based cocktail like this, always use a Rittenhouse rye, or honestly, maybe Baker's, but that's real hot for most people. Baker's, I'm gonna take a while, I guess, and say is like a rye in this case, I guess. Maybe more hot than a Rittenhouse. Rittenhouse is like a classic for like your Manhattans and stuff. Like, a lot of people will say, get a Rittenhouse like bottled and bond, which just means it's 100 proof, at least, to each their own. We're also gonna add 30 milliliters of vermouth. I've got my sweet vermouth in my fridge over here. Keep your vermouths preserved. <laughs> Keep your vermouths cool. Keep them in small quantities to make them better manageable. If you make yourself, oh, hey Google, oh, I'm sorry, Alexa, turn on the bar lights. Anna sometimes turns off the lights accidentally. She's definitely going to sleep right now. Sorry for the tiny little power outage. Every single time that happens, I'm like, oh my God, did the power go out? And I'm like, no, the stream is still going. It's very, very funny. Baker's is like 107 proof. Rittenhouse is like 100. Oh, wow. Oh, 
what did I say? Don't forget about your, your vermouth. So if you want to keep your, if you have like a really, really big bottle of vermouth, vermouth is a fortified wine. So fortified wines will oxidize over time. So what you want to do is you can put a layer of inert gas on top of the liqueur and it'll keep fresh and without any changes in flavor for longer. You don't have to do this naturally, but if you keep vermouth in your fridge for any longer than a couple of months, or if you keep your vermouth in general for any longer than a couple of months, I would recommend it because there is a noticeable change in the flavor over time. Just speaking from personal experience, like uh, there was one there was one stream that I had my buddy Eric on and we, we went through the whole thing. We compared fresh vermouth versus the stuff that had been sitting for like a year. There was a very noticeable difference there. It was very good. Jameson is like 80-ish, or just drink all your vermouth immediately. That's true, just like down the bottle. Safely, obviously. Jameson is, is, is 80 proof, exactly, 40%. The next thing that we're gonna add is 15 milliliters, or just about a half an ounce of Campari. I've got quite a bit of that. Thanks for the tip. Meow meow, you are so welcome. I just give these things after a while because I feel like I, I, I don't know the only reason I say this stuff like literally all the time is because like I feel like I'm a person who doesn't get it unless it's repeated I just added a half an ounce of Campari by the way or about 15 milliliters I, I learned by repetition if I don't do things over and over and over again before I get an idea of what's going on that's just the way that I learn so it's my show so that's how we do things uh, and then we need half an ounce or of creme de banana if you have it. If not, you can use any banana liqueur. I'm gonna use. Can you guess which one it is? I'll give you a moment. It's 99 bananas. The so same banana liqueur we've had this entire time. I we have made a very big dent in this glass. And I'm very happy to see that because it has been in my collection for quite a while. Half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of your banana liqueur which is great p.s i think the dolphin needs an umbrella <gasps> oh my god that's a great idea and you know what you get exactly what you asked for where are my umbrellas where are my umbrellas you're gonna get a green umbrella i play D D and i have chaotic energy that's the context for what's about to happen wait 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 where are you? Sorry for the fanatics. There you go, bud. Nope. Oh, it was so perfect for a moment. Hey, pal. I play D&D and I am chaotic. So when you say it needs an umbrella, I completely agree with you. Yes. You absolutely need an umbrella. Oh, I can't get my angle that way. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, I can. There we go. Now, aren't you a beautiful little number? Now, we've added all of our ingredients for our banana boulevardier, so in the meantime, while this guy's just chilling over there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stir this. Stir it for like 20 seconds or so. Just think about what you've done. I find that making cocktails can actually be quite therapeutic, or almost meditative. As you mix your glass for however many seconds you want to, they say seven is heaven. They say six, at least in one case said 20. I don't really know. There's a whole ma bunch of mathematics behind it, but just think about where you are, where you've been, where you're going. Isn't that beautiful? Not in the blowhole! <laughs> that was a good one! Yeah, I got him right in the blowhole. Sorry, Flipper. That's just, that's just... That's just how we play. And so... That's just how it is. In any case, um, yeah, wow, right in the blowhole. That's incredible. We just mixed up, <coughs> excuse me, our banana boulevardier, and the only thing that's left is we're going to put that into a cocktail glass. According to Difference Guide, we stir it all and stir it into an ice-filled glass over a large cube or a block of ice. So I'm gonna get myself one of my glasses over here, a Versace. Why, that's perfect. It's like sploosh. <laughs> sploosh. Or something like that. Alright, we're gonna go back there. Hey look, it's Flipper. But if we zoom in a little bit farther, we'll see that there's actually a beautiful cocktail to me. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? We're gonna grab a large ice cube from my freezer over here. I'm gonna strain things over top of it. I'll, I'll be honest. I will be honest, when I make my Negronis, when I make my Boulevardiers, I do not stir it in the stirring apparatus. 
I put it in the glass first and I pour it all over the ice cube and I just go from there. I am not, when it comes to my own personal explorations, I don't put in, I don't put in all the effort. But this is an excellent, excellent way to make your Negronis. And I guess if you were like serving this to anybody, you'd probably want to do it this way. And then we just strain over the top. Now, I see in the picture provided by Difford's Guide, I see in there a piece of banana. So what I'm going to do is, off camera, I'm going to cut off a little thing of banana. I'm going to place it up on top. There we go. And that's our banana, Boulevardier. And my god, if that ain't a pretty, pretty looking cocktail, I don't even know what is. That's beautiful. Beautiful little banana as well. In any case, how does a banana bit of already taste? Now, last night, I actually, I served for myself. It was a banana Negroni, because I just added, I think it was a full ounce of banana schnapps to a full ounce of Campari to a full ounce of gin to a full ounce of sweet vermouth. And it was very, very good. It hit me really hard. It was super easy to drink, because I just love a nice Negroni. This, in this case, what are we thinking? Oh yeah, very nice. So the whiskey is providing that that kind of. Oh, well, I'll, I'll break it down a different way. Campari imparts in its Negronis, its Boulevardiers, its Americanos a bitterness, but it's a bitterness that isn't totally unwelcome. It's balanced out with a tad of sweetness. It is a liqueur after all. It does have sugar in it. That is almost a little orangey. It is called a bitter orange liqueur, and it, I think it's specifically, it's bitter orange in the sense that there's like a bitter orange that exists over in Italy. I don't exactly remember where, I don't remember what it's called, and I might be speaking out of my ass for this one, but just hold for a moment. I think it tastes like that orange if you were to take it off the, the tree, give it a peel, and give it a bite. I've never tried that before. One day I'd like to, but I'm not at that point yet. It is orange in the sense that going back to my argument earlier that a dum dum lollipop that is called cherry is cherry flavored somebody told me it was cherry therefore it is cherry even though it doesn't taste like a cherry i've tried oranges before and i don't think this tastes like an orange campari on its own to me does not taste like orange juice as i know it it tastes almost like you bit into the peel and there's a bitterness that you get there it is prevalent in this drink there is a slight like heightening that is happening because of the banana schnapps in there. It's high in proof. So I think the heightening there is getting a little bit lost in the more alcoholic, like effervescence that's occurring there. Effervescence is the wrong word for it, but that, uh, that alcoholiness that carries the banana ever so slightly. I've had a lot of Boulevardiers before, and this is modifying it ever so slightly. To me, this tastes like just a regular Boulevardier with a little more dryness, probably because there's a banana sitting on top of it, and a little more sweetness, and a bit more of a boozy kick to it. I like it. And it's very, very nice. I guess if you haven't had a Boulevardier before, it's balanced in that it is bitter, it is sweet, it is earthy, and I think that's probably coming from the bourbon, probably coming from the, the Irish whiskey there. But it's 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 sweet. Despite all of the uh, despite the bitterness, despite the earthiness, it is sweet. And there's a cherry note there from the sweet vermouth. There's like the banana note there from the banana liqueur. There's like it's dry, but it's not so powerfully dry. It's almost like a pear dryness. Like you ever bite into a pear and it's a little bit dry? It's like that type of dryness. Not necessarily the persimmon dry, not necessarily the the tannin wine dry. It's like fruit skin dry. And it's giving me a lot of pear notes. That's what I can that's all I can think of. 
Oh my god. I definitely need to give it a try. It is on the list. I am very glad that I'm not the only person who's going to be wowed by this. This is good. Wow, what an excellent way to end a cocktail string. That's really good. Wow, that is incredibly good. I would highly recommend a banana boulevardier. I'd recommend boulevardiers and necronis all the time. Absolutely. Really tasty. They're, they're, to me, I really like bitter. For context, I don't like sour. I'm okay with sweet. I really like bitter. And that's kind of why the negroni kind of fits in that very, very sweet spot for me in particular. I could drink this the next couple of hours. And I might, because there has to be editing that happens after this stream. And I'm, I, I'm feeling a little, feeling a little woozy, so I'll probably hang in for the Discord a little bit while I'm getting everything organized and stuff. Where have we been so far? It's about three hours. We're in about three hour mark. And so the stream has to end here. This is the this is the end of the stream for now. And I thank you all very, very much for joining me. Where have we been so far? We covered a couple of different cocktails tonight as we covered the theme of bananas. We started off with a little bit of history about the fall of the Gros Michel banana, the banana that your grandparents were probably drinking, at least my grandparents drinking, eating. My grandparents were probably eating. It's not really around much anymore because the Panama disease just came in and wiped it all out. The bananas that you probably know and love, like this Cavendish, Cavendish banana, is what is most prominent in the world today. It is most prominent because it doesn't suffer. It is a little more resistant to that Panama disease. But most of the bananas out there, just like the Gros Michel before, are all kind of clones of each other. So there's no genetic diversity. And if you know a little bit about biology, if you have no diversity, that means if it affects one of you, it affects all of you. If there is another disease out there, such as tropical, I think it was called tropical rain or tropical race four, TR4, if that affects the Cavendish bananas, then bananas will cease to exist the way that we know it today. For all we know, there might be another banana strain out there that completely replaces all the bananas that we see in the market. Just like what happened to the Gros Michel. Raise a glass, take a sip of the Gros Michel, and for the longevity of the Cavendish banana and whatever comes out after it. Any case, very serious topic, I'm sure. The banana stuff, bananas are cool. What else did we cover this evening? We covered a couple different types of the banana daiquiri. The first one that we covered was a recipe that I found on a rum website. That The, the rum they sell is Bumboo, B-U-M-B-U. -B -U. Never tried it before. Just found their recipe and I just, harv I just harvested it. It's just what I do, I'm a taker. Uh, and you combine rum together with demerara sugar some lime juice and some banana puree it's a liquid drink it has no like extra icing at the end it's very spirit forward it's very banana forward and it's got a nice tartness to it which if you're into tart things the lime juice is really carrying it there it's very nice plus it's an excuse to use your demerara sweet simple syrup if you happen to have it we did the banana daiquiri a second way as well which is a frozen version of it which we used in our blender aptly named hamilton it's personally my favorite of the two daiquiris it's not as it's not as sweet, it's not as full, it's not as cold as it was previously because we made it like two hours ago, but it's very banana forward. If you are a fan of, like as it pertains to banana and rum, if you are more a fan of the rum than banana, go for the liquid version. You'll be more satisfied there. It's a little more boozy. If you're more a fan of the banana, go for the frozen version. It's a little more diluted and it packs a further punch on the banana. Mostly because I use the frozen banana here, which is if you're gonna blend bananas, Go frozen. It's very, very tasty there. The next cocktail that we did is we explored the concept of bubblegum. There's this fad, this, this rediscovery that's popped up of people discovering that like banana flavor, plus like cherry or pomegranate or Dr. Thunder or Dr. Pepper or whatever, creates the flavor of bubblegum. That's because bubblegum is a flavor that people have described as being a combo of banana like phenols and stuff with cherry or pomegranate or the other things that I just listed before, like grenadine for instance. We made two different bubblegum cocktails, one that used vodka, Southern Comfort, and banana liqueur combined with grenadine cream to try to make something that is a little more bubblegum flavored. Honestly, it was way too alcoholic for me. It was not very bubblegummy, and I wasn't a big fan of it. The bubblegum two, coming from the same exact book that I got from the first one, which is the Bartender's Black Book by, I think, Ryan Cunningham, I believe? Stephen, Stephen Cunningham. Um, combines melon liqueur, your Midori, with amaretto and cr milk and cream, or just cream, and your grenadine at the end. To me, amaretto is way too specific of a flavor. It's very, very sweet, and I love it very much, but that particular flavor in the cocktail itself 
distracted from the bubblegummy nature of it. It definitely tasted more like bubblegum than the first one. But like it really didn't taste the same as the bubblegum liqueur that I had said had some double bubble bubblegum sitting in vodka for a while and got this really awesome like pink colored spirit that uh, smells like bubblegum, kind of looks like bubblegum, and damn it tastes like bubblegum. We also tried combining Dr. Thunder, AKA Dr. Pepper, a little bit of a skewed from that, with banana liqueur, banana schnapps in this case, to see if we can get that flavor of bubblegum, and it does kind of taste like bubblegum. Bubblegum to me, at least what I've found, is if you combine cherry and banana to flavor together, you get something that is a little more bubblegummy, which was kind of cool to try to experience here. It was not the same, as what I had like discovered like three or four years ago when I first starred this bubblegum cocktail. But I think what I was using then was like a store-bought grenadine and not the grenadine that I made on my own. So if you were gonna try to try that again and try to make your own bubblegum cocktail, in this case, I would actually opt for the stuff that you would get from the store, not the stuff that you would make on your own because it's more cherry forward as opposed to pomegranate forward. But for any other purpose, I would say make your own grenadine and it adds a certain level of complexity and class to the cocktails you have going forward. The next thing we covered after uh, the bubble gum, I think we did a shot and that shot was a banana sandwich shot. According to the recipe, you take coffee liqueur and then you put banana liqueur on top of it and then you put rum cream on top of it, but the physics didn't work out there at, uh, at all. So we put coffee liqueur on the bottom. In this case, it was a Mr. Black Amaro, that orange Amaro. And above that was our, I'm sorry, it was, um, back up a second. We had Kahlua mudslide on the bottom which is like a coffee cream liqueur with rum in it. You add the coffee amaro on top of it, and then above everything is the banana schnapps, and it tasted really, really good. It was a very nice shot to take. It is pleasant. The cream, the creaminess of the, I think the purpose of the rum cream there is to carry the other flavors. And I get the, excuse me, get a little hiccupy over here. You get the coffee flavor, you get the slight orange flavor, you get the banana flavor, at least for the particular Amaro that I used, it was the coffee Amaro from Mr. Black, and it was very, very tasty. And a really nice, very pleasant shot to take. And it layered very nicely too when you do it my way and not the book's way. But it depends on what kind of spirits you have, as, as physics would define. After the banana sandwich, we took a lot of time and we did a banana spiced rum martini, which comes from a Disney book actually that my fiance grabbed at somewhere. Delicious Disney, sweet treats. And there was a couple cocktails in there and one of them is banana spiced rum martini. It's delicious. It is so well crafted. It is very simple. You combine in equal parts together horchata cream liqueur or something cinnamon flavored, a cinnamon cream liqueur with some spiced rum, which you could use your own spiced rum or you can use a Captain Morgan off the shelf. And you combine that with banana liqueur. I believe. Yes, most definitely. And it's so good. It's like a banana cream pie with graham cracker crust in a glass. And it is delightful. And you can garnish it with a little flipper over here with with or without uh, an umbrella just absolutely stabbed through their blowhole. Sorry, flipper. And then we ended on a banana Negroni. A Negroni, which is a very, I'm sorry, it's a Boulevardier, banana Boulevardier. A Boulevardier is a variation of a Negroni, which is a variation of an Americano. Americano is your Campari, your Sweet Vermouth, and your Club Soda. Your Negroni is your Gin, your Campari, and your Sweet Vermouth. Your Boulevardier is your Whiskey, your Campari, and your Sweet Vermouth. All in equal parts together, or whatever your ratio is desired. In this case, for Difford's Guide, we have a Banana Boulevardier, which is equal parts of your Campari. I'm going back in my notes just to make sure I know what I'm talking about. There we go. Equal parts for whiskey and vermouth, both in single ounce quantities. And then you split the difference between that last ounce there, that last 30 milliliters of your Campari and your creme de banana. Whiskey, vermouth, Campari, banana. 30, 30, 15, 15. Either way, in case I'm like totally battling these recipes right now, all of these videos show up on a YouTube channel. It's Cameron with an X. I will put all of the details in the YouTube channel description, the video description. I will also put it on the Discord as well. We have an X Bar Cocktails channel if you'd like to pop in and join. All of the photos we put there, all of the recipes we put there, I'll provide a little bit more thoughts of how I'm thinking about the cocktails when I'm not drinking them and I'm not as potentially buzzed, maybe a little drunk as I am right now. Um, and I usually enjoy my, they'll, they'll come up within the next week or so. They'll get there eventually. I'm a busy guy sometimes, but um, that's the show y'all. That's what I've got for you this evening. 
and I thank you very much for sticking it on to the very, very, the very, very bitter end. Bitter because of the Campari, but sweet otherwise. So thank you all. And I will take you all to the end screen where we will chill out for just, just a moment as I think about what happens forward. I should really come up with a, like announcements to say in these final moments, aside from like, thank you and have a wonderful rest of your night or evening or whatever. Like if I plan things farther out ahead of time, we would probably have more announcements to cover. In any case, this was wonderful. Rich, cheers to everybody out there. Truly speaking, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate being able to do these things and be able to, being able to just kind of share the process of learning with it with everybody else out there. If you learned a thing or two, I'm glad to hear it. If not, that's okay. We're all happy-go-lucky anyway, and we'll be back again next week at the same time, Wednesday, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. I love you all very much. In like a platonic way, obviously. I barely know you. We're just strangers on the internet. In any case, if the moon is up where you are, like it is with me, it's about 11 o'clock p.m. over here, I'm going to go to sleep in like an hour or so. May you have a wonderful rest of your night. If you're in a time zone that endows you to the sun where you are, may you have a wonderful rest of your morning. Dawn, twilight, noon. Otherwise, may you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I look forward very much to being your bartender next time around. Thank you all very much. Until then, y'all.